Uh, we live? Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with SEK2. Or rather, I'm in the editor save so that I can play around with delivery cannons. Um, or at least, I'm just actually here to to plan out the layout that's going to be our delivery cannon capsule delivery system. To spam resources from Nalvis to Hagen. Veldak, Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so... I think we wanted... Yeah, uh, we were gonna do... Loaders... For the main resources into the delivery cannons. Why is it so dark? Give to me lighted substations of the pylon variety. I really wish they hadn't made it this dark at night. I don't know how many updates ago. I guess we could... Uh... Freeze daytime? There we go. Much better. Wait, what? Much, much, much better. Thank you. Um, okay. Fake news? What? Zero. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I think we figured out there were 12 resources that we want to send to Hagen. Uh, we obviously want to send iron, copper, and steel ingots. Uh, then there is... Coal, absolutely, because we're short on coal at Hagen in any case. Um... I wish I'd made a note of this before. Heat shield LDS would be good. These are about the most complicated things that we can send. Uh, stone, brick, concrete. I don't think we need to send stone. And what else? How many have we got here? Ten. Um... don't really see the need... Oh, we definitely need to send rare metals. And we can't compress them anymore. Uh, let me just swap those around real quick. Plastic? I don't think so. Did you guys know T-Hacks can do a backflip? That's not true. Thonion. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. There's always that always render as day checkbox. Yes, indeed. Um, glass? We No, it's not glass. Oh, yes it is. Weirdly enough, we can send glass through a delivery cannon. But that's basically just stone. I don't think we need to do that. Um, coke? We could do coke. Coke is basically just coal, but more so. Um... That'll definitely help with the coal shortage on Hagen. Let's just check the recipe real quick. It's just coal and wood, right? Two hours, two hours until next round of Burger Festival? Nice. He's also allergic to Swiss chard? What is chard? Um, should we send uranium? Maybe. What have we got? 16. We can we can fit 16 different resources in here comfortably. 
Um, four resources per train stop should be fine. So that means we want to come up with another four of these. Unless we want to double up on some of the higher throughput things. Hmm. Okay, we got stone and concrete. Uh, we're not doing any core fragments. Ice, wood. We're doing coal. We're not sending these. Explosives? Uh, what goes into explosives again? Chemical plant. It's coal, sulfur, and water. I was going to say we are already sending coal, but... Well, it's a less resource-dense way to send coal. However... That's amusing. The total raw resources shows hydrogen and oxygen. As opposed to water itself. On the one hand, it is a less resource-dense way to send coal. On the other hand, um, it is sending more... No, 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 I don't think we'll do this. Uh, I don't think we'll send fuel. We're doing heat shield, we're doing iron, we're doing steel, we're doing copper, we're doing delivery cannon capsule. Uh, we're not sending lithium, right? Lithium chlorine is made... Of wait, what? Chlorine is oh no, that's one of the output products. Lithium chloride is hydrogen chloride and mineral water. Hydrogen chloride is chlorine and hydrogen. Chlorine is sand and water. Yeah, so we can do all that on Hagen. Um, we're not sending any exotic resources. I guess that just leaves coke. We already did coke and glass. I could double up on the high throughput stuff like iron, copper. Let's let's say. Iron, copper, steel, and rare metals will do twice as many cannons. It's a leafy green like spinach or kale. I finally got a nice VPN and now wherever I, wherever I use Google, it gives me a warning about unused traffic. Oh, unusual traffic. Indeed. Unused traffic. Um, okay, so we could go with maybe iron copper steel raw ram uh not raw rare metals um just rare metals uh heat shield lds stone brick concrete uh, maybe I should have doubled up on coal. Instead of what? Steel? Steel is probably going to be relatively slow. I mean, in terms of stack sizes, steel is always relatively slow. But then... But then, but then, but then. Uranium. Heat shield. That's not heat shield. Uh, coke and coal. Or coal and coke. 
This is probably fine, to be honest. I hope. I don't... Hmm, I could put coke up here. Wait, what is coke used for? Is it literally just steel? No, it's not. Light of research data, steel... Okay, those are different ways of doing steel. As opposed to turning them into steel plate first. Which is probably just worse, because you don't get as many steps with productivity bonuses. Uh, you can liquefy it... Hmm, coke is basically just steel. And by the research data. But we could probably... We could probably just do that on site. It's probably not as stack dense. I'm sure it's much less stack dense to send coke. Um, yeah, we'll send double steel, double coal. I think that'll do. Probably. Now then. Are we happy with this layout? We need nothing but delivery cannon capsules in the middle. And like so. I wonder if that doesn't quite look sense making. It's probably fine. But then I won't be able to be consistent with this unless I use an underground. Wait, why don't. Oh, I see. Those don't line up because we're doing a spiral pattern. That's fine. But, whoops. I think I'll make this underground. And this one goes here. How about something like this? Feels a bit more neat and consistent. I think I could live with that. Uh, we don't need any filters on these. This is just going to be delivery cannon capsules. Oh yeah, I remember this. There's like a million delivery can encapsule types when we search for it. But I think the plain one was relatively early in this list. Or was it under manufacturing? Scrap. Delivery can encapsule. There it is. It's the third one under scrap. Fantastic. Alright, so we're going to need logic on these things. Um, which is to say a receiver. We just need one for the entire block. This is a pretty snug fit. But the wiring uh we need to make sure that doesn't look too horrendous. I think that would look a little neater. Maybe not. That won't reach. We're going to need some 
uh, regular old substations anyway. Hey, Captain Troop. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so that's going to go snugly here every time. I'm catching up. Could you please say what's going on? Sure. Uh, so we've finished... Well, I don't know about finished. Um, we're getting ready to depart once again from Nalvis back to Hagen uh, for the second time. And we're setting up um, delivery cannon capsules, uh, delivery cannons rather, as the method that we're going to use to resupply it. Well, not resupply it, but we're, we're basically just helping. Especially with coal, um, we're helping Hagen out with Nalvis' uh, resources. Nalvis, uh, Hagen is going to be our main base. Um, but for now, most of our infrastructure is on, uh, Nalvis, and this is going to greatly accelerate, uh, building our base there. Can I just copy that? What the? I think that. That's right. Are one of these backward? No? M confusion. How about this? Okay. And then green wire goes back to the receiver. And that looks kind of weird. It's going to look kind of weird regardless. And I think we should do the logic for pulsing if we have to. Um, I, I think the logic for deciding when resources should be sent should be on the other end. Um, so this is just going to receive signals of... Uh, how much is in our delivery cannon chests on the other end. Uh, and it's going to receive a signal of, for example, heat shield greater than zero. Maybe I could set it to receive a negative. That might... Well, we can always change that. Um... Actually, let me just set these to, like, fish greater than zero. And we'll set those to the appropriate resources when we're sure we're ready. Oh, they should be stack size one, though. Because the whole point of controlling input of the delivery cannon capsules is that we can have precise control of how many stacks get sent. Uh, one swing of the inserter with max stack size, could send three stacks. Alright, so stack size one. And... Uh, we also need to set up our train stops. Which we've... What is this? Uh, which we've mostly done. Let's go standard requester here. Yeah. That doesn't need signals. It's the same over here as well. Be gone. Extra signals. All right, let's double check that we're starting from the same place. All right, so this one is one cargo wagon only. So train length is three. 
Request stack threshold 80. Delivery cannon capsule. Uh, stacks to 50, right? So... One train load is... What, 2,000? Let's make that 4,000. And we'll have a minimum of a couple of thousand-ish in reserve. And that is... Perhaps your receiver? Uh, requester, rather. Um, and then we've got... Iron and copper ingots. Train length four. Iron ingot stacks to fifty. Uh, so eight thousand would be two train loads. One should be done. And steel. This also stacks to. That stacks to 100 actually. Uh, 8,000 steel ingots. And 16k rare metals. And. Fantastic. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Almost forgot. We need to tell LTN what we have here. Did I connect that to the input? Yes, I did. Let's do those first. Okay. So we are requesting two train loads of these. Fantastic. We need to set filters after we do the train stops as well. This is heat shield, LDS, stone brick, and uh, concrete. Stack sizes are 50, 50, 100, and 100, I believe. Fantastic. So that is 8k and 16k. Heat shield. LDS. Stone brick. And concrete. Make sure that's switched on. Heat shield, LDS, stone brick, concrete, requester. Fantastic. And one more. Uh, what do we have here? I think all these stack to 50 and these stack to 100. Uh, so, why don't I just copy this and change the symbols? I guess it doesn't work that way, actually. Um, coal is 8k. Coke. Wait, no, this is just coal. So let's do 16k coal. And uranium... It's just 16k everything. Get it done. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Oh, I like that spiral with the power poles. Okay. Um... And then we just need to set the filters on uh, the outputs from here. 
Uh, come to think of it, if we're requesting two four train loads, we've got 256 storage here, um, 80 stacks, 160 stacks. It can all fit in this container. I think that's fine, honestly. We're basically using the container as a sort of balancer filter, a much neater one than if we used uh, lots of splitters and stuff. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, two, four, two, four, six, eight. Uh, what's 80 stacks? 3.2. Wait, did I get that wrong? Forty stacks to a cargo wagon, eighty stacks to a train, two fifty six stacks here, and we're getting four train loads. So one sixty three twenty. Yeah, no, that's gonna be more than full. Um, so we should probably connect wires like so. So that we have some balancing. If... What's uh, 256 over 2? 128. Let's say 125 stacks. 125 times 50. Uh, 6,250. That's a number that's going to come up a lot. I could... A spaceship... An entity is being damaged. Oh, no. Uh, I could do it like iron ingot less than copper ingot, but that's going to be a lot more decision-making. Worse UPS, I would imagine. Uh, it could also stutter back and forth. This is much simpler. This condition is going to change a lot less often, which I would imagine is more UPS friendly. Uh, and then we're going to do... Wait, that's not how that works. Uh, how about... Iron ingot... Iron ingot... Copper ingot... Copper ingot... And then... This goes here, and this goes here. Okay, just to make sure, we'll do some input here. Iron and copper, actually that's not going to work. And what the what what the what oh well there's your problem all right cool that should uh not exactly perfectly balanced but the point is just to not completely fill it so that we can't put one resource in as opposed to the other And we'll probably want to do about the same thing over here. What? Oh, I see. Uh, except we're going to be changing the resources and filters and so on. Um, I don't think it copied the fi Oh, it did copy the filters to the fast loaders. All right, so what are we doing here? Steel and rare metals. So steel is straightforward change of icon. Uh, rare metals, the stack size is twice as high. 
So we're just going to change that to 13,000. And again, just to make sure, burgers and fries, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Metals. And just double check that's working. It would appear so. Next is Heat Shield, LDS, and Stone, Brick, and Concrete. Well, for the first time, for the first stream in like three days, I got to play Factorio instead of Bug Hunt, so I had a ton of fun. Nice. Bug Hunt is sort of a nice little break from Factorio, but you don't want it to take up all of the time. Uh, okay, so we're doing four resources here. Heat shield is stack size 50, just like this. LDS, same deal. And then we've got stone, brick, and concrete, a stack size 100, uh, which is actually going to work out very nicely. It's basically the same layout as the last one. We just have to change the filters. Heat shield, LDS, uh, stone brick, and concrete. And then... One, two, three, four. I guess four is the limit of... No, six would be the limit for what would be easy to test. Heat shield, LDS. Stone break. Concrete. And go. Did I... Oh, I didn't copy these filters. There we go. Fantastic. On the rare metals chest? Is the filter out of the chest on the top right mixing? Uh, no, rare metals just look like that. Um, they, they're a bit randomized in their appearance. Rare metals. Like to the delivery cannon. To the delivery cannon. Oh. Oh, yes, they are. No, good point. Uh, so I don't think I... Yeah, I made this mistake here as well. We've done it. We've, we've made the same mistake with all of these. Good catch, thank you. And steel. Uh, it's these two. Auto save time. Gordon Freeman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Got some relatively massive vulcanite processing going. I think once I put beacons in it at my current mod tech level, it should be four blue belts. No half measures. Alright, that looks about right. And did I actually... No. Of course not. Uh, LDS shield goes here actually this is concrete 
And this one is stone brick. Okay, that looks wrong because that one doesn't have a filter actually. Also, this one has the wrong filter. How did I do that? Heat shield, concrete, and this one is correct, I believe. Much better. Okay, and I don't think I set appropriate limits on these because we've got four resources for the first time, so I need to halve all of these. Uh, 60, 50 over 2 is 31, 25. Let's just say 3100. We're rounding down so that there'll definitely be a few stacks of space. Uh, 6,200. 60, this is why we test. And try that again. Let's confirm the slack here as well. There is not slack here. Um... What are we doing? 6.2k, 13k. Um, 13k over 100. 130 stacks. Uh, 6250 over 50 should be the same. 125. That's weird. Uh, it should leave us some room though is the main thing. What about this one? That's what we want to see. Not quite full. Take care, burgers. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the raid. Any suggestions on how to learn about combinators? Struggling to set up nuclear power without wasting fuel. Uh, yeah. Uh... I mean, this stream is a good place to hang around for that, but also, I, I did throw out a couple of tutorials, however, I should probably give it a refresh. Could maybe do a new one. I was thinking of, I I've wanted to do a scripted tutorial for a while, but I just haven't been happy with how it comes out. Um, but maybe I should just do that on stream. And get chat's input. I, I definitely want to hear from beginners um, as I'm making it as to how clear something is. There's no half measures in this restart. Made me miserable in the last one. Fair enough. Alright. Uh, so... I think... Oh, is this leaving a gap? Yes, it is. That one is not. How did this happen? 13k, 6.2k. We did the math. Oh, is the stack size not what I thought it was? 50? 100. 130 stacks. One twenty-five stacks. Uh, why don't we just make this 12,500? I feel like I'm just making a basic math error. Sounds good. Well, as a beginner, it's too hard to follow the things that you set up on the fly while building your factory. Yeah, I know, um... I'm probably a bit fast uh, for some of these things. Um, there's some very Factorio-specific things in learning Combinators as well. It's not like 
a completely transferable skill from Minecraft if you used redstone. Wrong thing set to 12,500. Oh. I should have realized that when this moved. Whoops. Uh, 6250. And copy that. Alright, we got there in time. Good catch, Boovim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Next is coal, uranium, and uranium. Uh, I think I'm okay with having twice as much coal here. So we're just going to go with... The stack size works. This, the stack sizes work out perfectly so that we're just going to give them all the same limit, which is 12,500, I believe. Uh, let's see, call 12,500, uranium... For a second there I thought, oh, I didn't realize I can send uranium fuel cells, but no, we can't do that. 130 plus 125 equals 255, or the big chest is 256 stack, one stack off, yes. Poor Ayo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. And test everything. Double coal, uh, uranium, and uranium. And we should see that not quite fill up. Also, I need to do the filters on the other side. Coal, coal... Uranium and uranium. For the reactor, I just have steam tanks and check their contents. When it's getting low, I start the inserters. Yes. Uh, stored steam has a lot of energy density. Uh, so if you just, like, whenever you put fuel into a nuclear reactor, whether you use it or not, it's going to um, burn all that fuel and generate all that energy. Obviously, that's the problem. Um, as long as you have enough space in your energy storage, uh, which can be steam tanks, uh you're not going to go over and waste fuel. And in Factorio, heat pipes and things like this, uh, anything that stores or transports heat, uh, it doesn't actually vent any heat passively. So if you have... Let's set this heat pipe to a certain temperature. Uh, one, two, three, four, five degrees. Wait, we can't go that high. One, two, three degrees. Exactly. So this is... That's weird. It went above it, probably because I set it higher a second ago. Uh, we're going to disconnect that now. And I guess we don't have the heat, like, sloshing around, kind of like fluids normally do. But basically, no matter how long we wait, uh, that temperature right there is never going to change until we consume it. 
So when you heat up a nuclear reactor to 500 degrees, um, and then you stop putting fuel in it, and it consume uh, the heat exchangers consume all the excess heat, uh, the temperature drops to exactly 500 or 501, whatever it is, and they stop working. Um, the nice thing is the moment that you put uh, nuclear fuel into the reactor again, it doesn't take that long. Uh, or it, it's not like starting it up the first time all over again. Uh, it starts generating power pretty much immediately. Does speeding up time in editor speed up biters eating your base? Yes, that's why we're on... Well, that's not the main reason, actually, but currently we are on a different save. Uh, the reason that I'm on the different save is there's certain things that I can't put in... Uh, what is it called? The, like, lab? Uh, the testing lab that's in our main game that's, like, just a separate surface. Uh, we can't put things like delivery cannons. Uh, I think possibly anything energy beam related, uh, it won't let me place. And we certainly can't test something like a space elevator or a spaceship. In fact, I think... I think when we put a console... A spaceship console on the ground... Uh, it actually crashed the game. I want to test something right now, actually. I, I suspect... The reason the game was crashing when I used uh, LTN Manager has something to do with that extra surface, but it could just be, like, version troubles. Yep, no. LTN Manager crashes in our main save with the same versions and mod sets and stuff. So there are... A couple of drawbacks uh, to using this uh, separate surface in your main game, uh, the testing lab. Uh, we can't use LTN Manager, and we can't test certain things. Anything to do with multiple surfaces, we can't really test. Um, and we can't even place something like a delivery cannon, so here we are. Okay. If you want 100% wasteless, you need more refined circuits. Um, not that refined. It, you basically just have to make sure that you never hit your peak of energy storage. Set it enough tanks to take the steam of one fuel cell? Yeah, there you go. Um, are we finished with this build? I think we are. Let's just double check. I didn't do the station name here. Coal. Uh, uranium and uranium. Let's check the station names this way. Might be a bit easier. That looks good. I wish there was an overlay that showed the station name here. Um, but yeah, I think we're finished. It's not a bad layout. Obviously, technically, we could have used more space, but I don't care. It's fine. Alright, so let's blueprint this thing. Get rid of the cheat items. Actually, it's easier if I remove them this way. And... Cannon... Uh... Hagen Delivery System. Snap to grid 8624, I believe. Train stop names, 
I have a Factorio problem, I don't want to start a new base, and I don't want to continue my current base, but I want to play. <laughs> I can I can imagine. Alright, I think that's it. And we'll just double check, yes, the snap to grid is correct. Put that in... Uh, I don't know, next to the delivery cannon capsules. Don't need this anymore. Is there anything else we want to test? Um, here, here you can see my attempts at fitting this in the middle of one of our rail blocks and having as many stackers as possible and having it look good. It's it, it, it's not working out as well as one would hope. It's not that bad though, I guess. I don't think I'm going to come up with anything really symmetrical and satisfying here. The space elevator itself is not actually symmetrical. You can see the rails don't come out the middle. I always have another half done save. It's more of a I have finished issue. Hey, Veldak? Uh, oh wait, you already said hello. Currently packing my Nalvis orbit into boxes and rebuilding it again elsewhere. Yes. Get out of here, Nalvis. Everyone's joining the anti-Nalvis coalition. Alright. Uh, so we're going to our main save. Hissing Walnuts and a, a Glacier Wolf. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did I say hello to Fraser K? Welcome, Fraser. Uh, so, this will be where we build our... new system. Um, I don't think we want these ghosts here, and there's nothing that's going to be in the way. Fantastic. Andy Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wow, there is already a train scheduled to deliver this. Thirsty trains. That couldn't have been more... The only way you could exaggerate that is if the train arrived one second after I placed these rails. Okay, uh, we're gonna need four warehouses, which means 400 steel. Or I could just pick up the actual warehouses. I'm pretty sure I did automate those. Um, so let's set a request. And we're going to need a signal receiver, which means big electric motors. Okay. We're also going to need more loaders. What's the plan for today? It is basically to set things up so that we have lots of automated delivery from Nalvis to Hagen. Uh, and maybe push the biters back a little bit further so that we don't have to come back here for a while. We're, we're basically setting things up so, uh, so that we can make Hagen our main base. Dullest Wall. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good morning to you. Uh, I came here for warehouse. Oh, wow, we've already got 20. Fantastic. Uh, anything... You know what? It's probably quicker if I just fly back there. It's 
probably just the loaders that we might run out of. Oh wait, I needed big electric motors. I should carry those all the time. One stack goes a long way. Don't export to string. What was I exporting to string? My requests? Yeah, that's cool that you can do that. That's very cool. Okay. Wait, warehouse. Oh, we needed storehouses, not warehouses. Actually, I can only handcraft two. Rip. Storehouse. Get out of here, warehouses. How are those rail blocks working for you? People talk down on roundabouts, but I haven't found a, a set of city blocks without them. Uh, roundabouts are great, actually. But especially... Roundabouts are a great tool when you are new at rail. Uh, and then you can actually just add things to roundabouts that completely negate the downsides. Except for the signal count. Um, and... I guess that probably affects UPS, but basically I've got straight rail going straight through, uh, so if they're not turning, there's absolutely no need for the trains to slow down, uh, and the, the reason that I have roundabouts is the roundabouts are actually bi-directional, so we can have trains going clockwise or counterclockwise on the roundabouts, with trains that... no path. Oh, it's probably the block that I'm building. Yeah, it is. Uh, with trains that can go both directions, and roundabouts that can go both directions, it's incredibly easy, compact, and neat to have uh, train stops coming off of them, as you can see. We don't need giant loops um, for our trains to drop something off. Why do I have 40 strong boxes? Whatever. It's fine. I thought there was no speed penalty in Factorio for taking a curve. Uh, is there not? Even if there isn't, uh, it, a roundabout will take a train slightly longer. I mean, yeah, the way I've seen trains move, I would believe it, but uh, even if there is no speed penalty, uh, obviously there's a slightly longer path a train needs to take through an intersection to make a turn if it's through a roundabout. So other trains will have to wait slightly longer. Um, but as long as you... as long as you're sensible with your signaling and, uh, don't build your rail blocks with such high throughput that the demand in one area for trains is super, uh, super high. I s oh, now I have no steel plate. Can I borrow from some steel plate up here? Or maybe even from here, that might work. No, we're not delivering plate, we're delivering ingots. Um, steel plate, here we go. Give to me all the steel plate, please. I'm not going to steal it from... Well, because this is saturated, I could have stolen it from here, actually. Uh, but I didn't want to disrupt the balance. What was I making again? Oh, yeah. A signal receiver. And I felt feel like I'm forgetting something over here somewhere. Maybe that was the biters, actually. Trains do slow down on roundabouts. Not much they do slow down. I've seen them go through corners extremely quickly. 
This one would have been slowing down because it was approaching the train stop. I really like that this city block layout is two-way drive. Yeah, two-way drive was quite the learning curve. Um, it was it was sort of like learning rail signals all over again, uh, especially in that once you get it, it seems really really easy. It, it's rail signals is one of those things that. When it clicks, it clicks hard. It's just really, really easy to understand once you get it. Um, but there's kind of like a... Almost like a mental block. Oh, what's that? Oh, I know what that is. That's from when we used the satellite view to deconstruct. Oh, how did I do this? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's... The shovel thing, Alt C. Normally, I would walk up to this, use Alt C. Uh, I don't know where you find the th the name of that. Or maybe chat told me Creep Collector. Here it is, Alt C. But yeah, use the Creep Collector from the Navsat view, and it just drops it onto the ground, like that. Um, but yeah, I was thinking I should grab another horse scene, although we're probably... I was going to say we're probably bottlenecked on something being full here. We've actually got too much stone. Repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's our power? Uh, it's kind of hard to say because that includes the emergency batteries. How about now? We've got like 300 megawatts we can tap into. Oh, how's our steam? Three, uh, let's see. 637 thousand. I think that's enough to stop a, a coronal mass ejection. Next ones, the next two are aimed at surfaces that we're not on, so no need to worry there. Beat bunks, bunk and beats. Bunk and beats every day. What are we going to call this? Uh, Hagen? I think that's fine. I don't think we're going to set up another set of delivery cannons aimed at Hagen. Uh, so now we need delivery cannon chests on the other end. Should probably... Well, I can definitely design a block for that without going to the other save, I think. I don't see why we would not be allowed to place delivery cannon chests. Yeah, no, because it's just a container. No worries there. Uh... It's not going to take up a whole lot of space, and this reminds me, I was thinking of making some storage blocks, but I haven't thought of the best way to make it, like, super compact and stuff. I think I'd like to just have... I, I did think about having a train stop that is both a pickup and a drop off, but for one thing, bulk rail loaders and unloaders can't like do a reverse and and change to do the opposite thing. Um, but the other thing is, well, it has to be a bit further away. 
if we do it like this, I was thinking perhaps we could simply have the drop off and pick up next to each other. Completely minimizing. any kind of logistics between them. Oh, that's a good fit, actually. That is a very good fit. A rebalancer would be good, though. If we want to have it accessible to short trains. Definitely like to have it accessible to short trains. Come to think of it, we're never going to take from just this container, right? So we only really need this to go in one direction. But we would still need... No, actually this is fine. I was going to say we would still need a combinator so that we could compare one container to the other, but that's not true. We can simply say this is enabled if uh, if the first one has less than 40 stacks. Yeah, I think that'd be okay. Or we could do that both ways, as a matter of fact. It does mean it'll go around in circles when there's a shortage, but, whoops, I, I don't think that bothers me. To do this without a combinator, uh, that's actually pretty neat. Those hold more than 40 stacks? Oh yes. Um, they hold 8 train loads, uh, 320 stacks. This is with... You can change it, I think, but this is with, like, default settings. It's actually only a little bit more than uh, if you have six steel chests per uh, per cargo wagon. Um, that works out to 7.2 train loads. And then... There's not quite enough room to do it this way. Wait, yes there is. I'm pretty sure that'll go through. So let's say we have stone. Yeah, in it goes. And let's say we are getting rid of stone from in here. So time to place more elevators? Never enough elevators. Make an orbital ring. I'll be back later. Bye. Take care, Veldek. Enjoy the festival. Send pics. Uh, okay, so that's getting filled rather quickly, actually. Oh, I didn't set this. That's the problem. Um, I wish we could get generic uh settings that would look for stack sizes but i guess it's fine if stone is less than 2000 take stone from here and put it in here and that should be 
that that should do its decision making very rarely, and it'll spend most of its time idle, so I would imagine the UPS cost is minimal. Depends on how it's optimized, but I would expect almost the best possible optimization uh, in Factorio for the most part, considering how much can happen in the game before it starts slowing down, even on a modest computer. Okay, so with this we should be able to have uh, 2468 different resources stored in one block quite comfortably. Um, and that's 8 times 8 train loads. No, that's 8 times 16 train loads. If we were to fill both of these. Um, I might... In order to avoid increasing the combinator count... Oh, that's bad. I was going to say I might have to do... Uh, reverse wire colors over here so that I can read all of this, but but then I wouldn't be able to rebalance these because we've got red wires here. Yet again, I wish for at least one more wire color. Um, but what we could do is just have one combinator. as basically a one-way piece of wire. So we have... I don't necessarily want to do each because that'll include the green light. I don't think the green light is going to do anything bad. We can probably make this generic. So each times one. Output each. Just a one-way piece of wire, effectively. And we're going to request, like, I don't know, 15 train loads of stone here. Can you just wire it up all green except red from the LTN Combinator at station? Uh, I do do that. Oh. You might be onto something. Oh, that's... That's kind of wild that that might work. We have two stations connected to each other. This didn't cause problems when we did it with depots. And I don't see why it should cause problems here. Actually. My, my mind is being blown slightly. <laughs> okay, so this is a... Uh, not a requester. This is a pickup. Uh, it's going to be a low priority pickup. Because we want to take from where stuff is produced first. This is just our backup supply, basically. And this should be a low priority requester. Actually, I don't think we care about making the pickup low priority. The requester should be low priority, though. Probably the absolute lowest priority. The last place that we want to take stone is uh, the backup supply, backup storage. Alright, so stone, instead of putting request a chest to explain what this station is, I think I'll put a storage chest. And this will just be stone pickup.
I'm not actually going to flesh this out just yet. I'm just sort of thinking out loud. But, yeah, I think that'll basically be it. Um... And we can allow short trains to pick this up. I might even make this standard. No, I don't think I want to do this everywhere. I, I don't know. I'll think about it. Or maybe it'll be depending on the resource. I was going to say maybe I should have more than one belt outputting from this to this, but if this is the backup that we're taking from, the storage, it probably doesn't matter that much. Alright, now let's do it on the other side. And that's going to go there, I think. Is that right? Let me just get rid of the signals so that I can flip this. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, we need a requester station. We need signals. And... This should be the same as this. And I do want to include that. Make it clockwise, why not? Yeah, I think uh, that's basically our storage blocks. If we quadruple this in the same block, uh, we are going to get a bit of overlap. How much can we do about it? Oh, not as much. That's probably okay, to be honest. So, if not for this, normally we've got just enough room here so that a whole train can fit in here without blocking this one and vice versa. But that's not going to work out this time. However, the overall throughput of taking from storage blocks... shouldn't be that high. So it's probably fine. But the thing is... We can't even fit signals here, so like... Any one train in this quarter is gonna block... All of the other trains that want to be in this quarter. So, let's say this is iron and copper. If anyone's dropping off or picking up iron from the iron storage, it's going to block anyone picking up or dropping off copper from the copper storage. Even considering... Uh, that this is just a storage area and the overall throughput will be low. I love how that looks and fits together though. We've got a whole bunch of empty space in the middle but I don't know what we could do about that. I guess I could try... We could have train stations 
overlapping each other in this area. Which should be less of a drawback on that kind of traffic issue. So basically, if we move this forward a few tiles... Are we still going to have the same problem because the... We're going to have to see where we can put the curved rail. Okay, so how far forward could I move these? One, two, one, two. And this would have to go here. I think that's our limit already. And this would go something like this. Oh, we could probably do the same thing uh, with the pickup stations. All right, then. It's going to be cozy. And that's probably fine. That would mean drop-off for iron is going to block drop-off for copper. Pick-up for iron is going to block pick-up for copper. But not all four of these are going to block each other. Which I think I can probably live with. We should even be able to fit signals here? Question mark? Maybe not. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, it just barely fits, is what I would say, if not for those flashing lights. That works, though. But then we're not going to be able to replicate that in the other direction. Uh, however... Oh, we can just barely fit these signals here. But not here. This is agonizingly close. Hmm. Oh, that doesn't actually fit a train. Apparently. I've not really made it look like it does. Would there be a better way to get the train to have access here? Like maybe curve it this way? I don't suppose that's going to work. Not even close. Wait, no, where am I putting this? I'm getting a little confused here. Uh, I'm getting very confused here. What what would this look like over here? Bird's eye view. Well, we have to remove this first. No, that's definitely going to be in the way. Hmm. Let's try... Wait, where does this go? Let's try putting this here 
and see if, see what we can see. For a, wait, what? Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Haven't moved the bulk loaders. Haven't moved the bulk loaders. Oh, true. Oh, here we go. That might that might help. Thank you, Benway. That means we have to remove all this. And then put that back. Okay. So this is hopefully going to be where the stations are going to be. And we'll see if we can fit a way in and out for uh, the unloaders that doesn't get in the way of everything else. Oh, we can actually do it like that. So, original plan looked like this, however... Oh, that might just work. One off. I think if I do it like this, that signal isn't gonna be working. That is tragically close. Also, this one... We would definitely have room for signals here. And here. But the signal block from the roundabout is going to go all the way into here. And the unloaders? Oh, bollocks. Goes here. No, it doesn't. One of these, one of these, and one of these. Is this one in line at least? Yeah, so I don't think. I don't think the planning that I was doing just now was invalidated. Uh, still, just to make sure we don't leave any lingering mistakes. Let's start the block from scratch again. Not that one. Okay, so that would go there. That would go there. And that would go there. That actually looks pretty neat. Let's assume this and this. And again, if I do the corner rail like that, that signal won't be able to work. If I do a corner like this, it's not quite going to fit. If I go up this way, Uh, maybe. Probably gonna cause problems. Wait, what? Oh, here. With the roundabout signaling. Hmm. If I went straight through here, we'd have to make some exceptions. I don't love making exceptions for the roundabout signaling, but if the entire block is going to be radially symmetrical like that, this might be okay. Um...
Oh. Oh no. If these two cross each other, there's just barely not going to be room for signalling to have them not cut each other off. Hmm. Maybe I could put the unloaders further in. This is surprisingly difficult. Now you are trying to cram too many stations in that block? Not enough. I want all stations. Could you path the lower trains to the straightaways instead of the roundabout? Uh, oh, you mean like... like this? I guess we could... Technically, the straights are supposed to be one direction only. But... Let's say we did that. This whole block here would have to be... Not somewhere that we can normally stop. Like it usually is. This would have to move. If it was still one way, could the train escape in the other direction? It could. Except... We wouldn't have this station accessible. So this would have to be two-directional, straight. Whoops. Which... From this end... We would have to add signal here, signal here, which we can't fit. Yeah, that... That would be a bit of a problem. Um, what if this went down here? Let's consider. Let's say we have our intersection here signaled the way we would like. So that... Well, it, it could actually be as far up as here, if we want. But basically, right after these signals, we do a corner. Oh, is that is that just gonna work? Do I do I just need to move these over a little bit? That would be very convenient. Um, what's the mirror image of this? Here we go. Do the top one first. Signals. I think we're going to end up with the same problem we had before. Whereby, yes, it fits together and it works, but... There's going to be a lot of blocking other trains with the signaling. Because we can't put signals here. I could just have one drop off here for both of these. And we won't have quite so much storage. Uh, we'll, we'll only have 12 train loads of storage for each resource. I think I can maybe, uh, maybe possibly live with that. Mike Clat, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
So if we have this, like, in the middle... There isn't really a middle tile, though. Aziz Light! Aziz Light? Ragamuffin, good to see you again. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, how close can we get to the middle? It's going to be one off. So if we did put that there... Then this would... Let's say we do this. Look something like that. And actually go up a bit. Is that how it is? We can easily fit signaling here. Yeah, we're just going to have to share drop-offs for these two resources. I might consider having bigger roundabouts in a future block so that there's more space on this side. Oh. I don't suppose we could... We can't quite fit that... <laughs> Uh, this is two things, actually, where we're one tile off being able to fit something really good up here. Uh, I can't quite fit the huge storage tanks on this side of the input rail so that we can fit uh, steel pumps, one from each uh, fluid wagon going straight into the storage tank. So, if these roundabouts were slightly bigger than the smallest possible roundabouts, um, that's two, two instances where we could fit something very, very nicely. I might consider that in future. Gotta go a little bigger. Okay, so we're gonna have... A little bit of belt spaghetti to filter the resources from here. Oh. Is that going to be okay? If I share a green wire across all of these, I think all we would have to do is... Uh, we have a default provide threshold of a bajillion. Or you could put it in manually. If we have a provide threshold of, well, no, we're, we're manually setting the provide threshold at 80 stacks. Uh, the request threshold is what I was really thinking of. If we have a request threshold set so high it effectively doesn't exist, and we have two different resources going into these stations, and in this one we... Well, that stop actually represents these two uh, loaders. Um, if we're putting iron here, let, let's say we're dropping off iron and copper. Iron goes to here, copper goes to here. If the train stop for this one receives a signal of negative lots of copper, uh, but not high enough to reach the request threshold, then it won't get confused and think... Uh, copper is available for pickup from this station. Um, can't quite share the signal across providers. I th 
it'll think both stations have both iron and copper. Yeah, I'm just explaining how we can avoid that. We basically feed them a negative signal of whatever they're not supposed to be providing. And that negative signal is not as big as our request threshold. So it doesn't trigger a request. So we keep the signal that the train stop is receiving for that resource that it doesn't actually have uh, at or below zero, but not a large enough negative to reach the request threshold. Uh, so yeah, I think this is probably how we'll do it. We'll just see how that fits together first. And it looks like it fits together rather well. The negative signal shouldn't be getting sent to the request station at all. To the request station? To the provider station? Oh, this is... This is now seen as the same block. That's why it's blinking. So we'll allow that train to leave in either direction. And then... Like this. So basically we've gone from being able to store 16 train loads of each resource uh, to only 12 in in this block. I do feel like the middle could maybe fit some more stuff. We could probably throw some solar panels in or something. You were saying that you don't want putting the negative signal on there to trigger a request. Uh, yeah, I was just explaining how that would be a problem, but I do have a way around it. Alright, so requester. Uh, provider. Oh, this is backward from what I'm thinking because they're all cozy. Oh, and the the train, yeah. So this train will block this direction, this train will block this direction, but that's fine. Um, this actually makes a ton of sense as well for storage with how we're bottlenecking the trains. Because overall, throughput will be low. Sometimes throughput will be higher when we're picking stuff up. But if there's like a rush on putting a resource into storage or a number of resources into storage, I'm not that worried at the time. You could also have the side stations as double drop-off. Single provider if you need six and six. Oh yeah, as in, this could be a, uh, this could be a provider station for both resources. That, that would be better for train traffic. So, actually we just want a two to four split. For all of these. Um, and we can definitely do our rebalancer so that short trains can pick this stuff up. We're just gonna say if there's less than one train load in whichever loader, then we're going to allow that through.
Which I suppose means I could just let the resources go straight from here to here. Technically. But if we're doing two different resources, we definitely want to balance those. Oh, this is only good if if we're only doing one resource per station. I think we will just do one resource per station uh, for those reasons. Okay. I'm not overly concerned about the throughput. Just one belt from each to each. Should be fine. This is, after all, the last place we want the resources to go. That station's a little bit in the way. The bulk loaders can't filter their output, can they? No, they can't. Uh, that's... That's another good reason not to mix the resources, actually. You can mix the resources for unloaders, but not the loaders. Hmm. I guess technically, if we're doing this, it'd be fine to just put two belts worth into here, but... And, and then let that one belt go to here, but no, it's fine. I don't want this to have to do its thing every train load. It, it's only if it gets imbalanced. Um, okay. Where would be the neatest place to do this? Probably on the outside. Something like this, perhaps? Also, are we still going super speed or something? Why is the... Why is the UPS low? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something is very wrong. Um... Hello? Entity update 37. Weren't we at 60 a minute ago? UPS. Game update 38.9. Entity update 37. It keeps climbing. Uh... Is it the biters? Script update, Pathfinder, trains, it's all rather small. Entity update is climbing to 40. It, it's just, I think it seems to just be going up indefinitely. What's entity times say? Do you mean this? Is it the pause option in sandbox? Uh... No, I don't think... Uh-oh. Like... I didn't actually pause it. If we pause it, it goes to 60. That's weird, we can... Oh, I didn't realize. Hold on, let me... Let me check something. Let me put myself on a belt. And we're going to go to the sandbox, pause the game for a bit.
That's weird. Now we're at 23 UPS while it's paused. In debug, it's the option show entity time. Option show entity time. It did seem to pause it, even though the UPS was still low. What the... We haven't done much today except for design, so we're not going to lose progress. But... Oh. That's... That's a lot. Okay. Uh, you're saying it's entity update... How do I search this? Show entity time usage? Last save... what... Uh, where is it? List of clades, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Welcome raiders. Might want to hide mod UI. Mod UI. Hide mod GUIs, is that it? I've still got double text here. Uh, frame cycle? That doesn't seem to be it. Hide the other debug stats? I guess so. Show time usage? Okay, so this is just entity... Class unit, 35 and so on. What is class unit? And is it biters? Did we just suddenly, like, aggro every biter on the planet or something? Class spawners to who woke the biters, right? It seems like literally every biter on the planet just woke up at the same time. Enemy spawner. Uh, maybe I'm just going to have to remove Rampant. Um, I might save here under a different name. Oh, what's this? Yeah, they're attacking. They're attacking a lot, probably. If they're attacking from that far away... Maybe this is happening in all directions at the same time. Uh, anyway, what I might do is save as rip UPS. Do you have, like, weapons or something? What's causing this even... I don't have weapon delivery cannons or anything like that, if that's what you mean. So this is the biter equivalent of a solar flare? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we're going to not change the mods or anything and load our save. This is the exact same save from earlier today. All we've been doing is building uh, a block for delivery cannons. And then spent a little while designing uh, a storage block. So pretty much all that's happened is some time has passed. We're at 60 UPS here, as we were while we were designing. Uh, and presumably if we load that save, rip UPS... I don't think turning it off and on is going to resolve the issue. Or maybe it will, and then, like, two minutes later, it's going to check to see what the biters should be doing, and then several million of them are going to path to our base at the same time. 
A BME, right? Uh, yeah, we're down to 34 UPS. Okay. What I might do is turn off Rampant. Taranam, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Rip, Rampant. Are there any other mods that might give us more Biter trouble? Armored Biter's probably not. Our armored Biter's probably won't, like, impact our UPS. It's just a different type of Biter. I don't suppose there's Biter options in Rampant. To leave it on the default AI, uh, the vanilla AI. I Jammin, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If it's just a huge attack, I kind of want to see it. It's going to take an hour to see it, though. <laughs> Biter delivery cannons? Oh my lord. At this point, Rampant doesn't seem to be too useful, right? You're easily holding them back. We didn't get to nuke biters. So we really didn't see how bad it was going to get. Um... All right, let's let's check our mods real quick. AAI industry warehouses and containers, signal transmission, afraid of the dark alien biomes, armored biters, auto trash, blueprint trees. Oh, that kind of tree, yes. Uh, bulk rail loader, calculator, combat mechanics overhaul, crafting combinator, lamp RGB, editor extensions, even distribution. Uh, some factory utility stuff, FNEI, Informatron, Jetpack, Crastorio 2, Lighted Electric Poles, LTN stuff, Module Inserter, Nice Fill, No Nuke Scorch, Maker Dolly's Pipe Visualizer, Rate Calculator Recipe Book, Robot Attrition, Rusty's Locale, I think that's just a required utility. SE Space Trains Shield Projector Simulation Helper. Oh, that's another, like, prereq. SpaceX, stack size, text plates, tree x-ray underneath these. Okay, so the only biter mod we're going to have now is Armored Biters, which is going to be pretty underwhelming compared to Rampant. Uh, let's see if loading the RIP UPS save just with Rampant removed is going to be a lot more manageable. Why are you turning off biters? Just tuning in. Mass Lander, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, um, Presumably 600 million biters just chose to attack at the same time, and UPS went from 60 to 20. Is Rampant something that removes gracefully? Yeah, I've done it before. Um, it actually... Let's not sync mods. Uh, it'll actually remove a lot of the biter nests, most likely. Based on my experience last time, it removed like 90 to 95% of them. UPS literally went from like 15 to 55 on my Death World playthrough. Might be a lot of empty, unused nests now. Empty nests. Migrated content, it's all just biters. It's a lot of different kinds of biters and worms. And the exact same save, minus rampant, where it's 60 UP. At what the? Um... Uh, 
Uh, victory? Greenpeace would like a word. Uh, this feels a little bit like cheating. I don't know about you guys. Trim chunks, here we go. I was considering that, yeah. That's one way to deal with the biter issue. <laughs> Confirm extinction, quick. Oh! I, I see two biters. Uh, are these the only ones left? Three, four biters? Where are they coming from? What? Oh, there's another one. What just happened? We did it, Reddit. Two biters called Adam and Eve. Uh, alright. What do you guys think of trimming surface? It might take a little moment. Biters, we will rebuild. <laughs> Indeed. Remove the rendered biters with the SpaceX planet culling. Wait, what? Maybe it fixes it. Oh, do you mean what we're doing now? Kellogg's? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You could leave rampant on and trim too. Uh, I don't know how much that would help. I mean, eventually we're going to get huge attacks again. If you trim it before confirming extinction, they may come back when you explore the chunks again. Yeah, that's what I want. Uh, it feels a little too easy to just have all of the biters on Nalvis removed like that. Um, I definitely don't mind keeping this much cleared. I mean, I guess I don't have a choice anyway, but we did earn this. Uh, but let's... Let's scan the surface and just confirm. Yeah, there are still hostiles. Uh, I'll load the save again because there's no real reason to scan this other than our testing purposes right now to confirm there's still biters. Or I guess I could just trim surface again. Quick question for... Uh, what is being used to make and test the blueprints that I've seen you setting up? Uh, do you mean the testing lab? This thing? It, it, it's a surface in parallel to our save. Uh, so the mod is called Editor Extensions. And to have that surface in a playthrough that you're able to access without going to another save, uh, you just need to go to Testing Lab and change it from the default setting, which is off. And it'll tell you in this uh, mouse over, but you might want to uncheck sync inventory, uh, because uh, if you don't want to cheat using that. There are some downsides to this compared to having another save. Uh, one such downside, which I just confirmed today, is... If I try to use LTN Manager, uh, it crashes. Um, it turns out that with the same set of mods, uh, if we don't have a surface like that, LTN doesn't crash. Um, I did it in the in, in the lab save. The other reason, uh, the other downside is. Delivery cannons, energy beams, uh, spaceships, and so on. Uh, you're not going to be able to build in that surface. In fact, I think it crashes when I put a spaceship console down. So there's a couple of things you can't do with it. But other than that, I mean, if, if you just think of it as, well, you don't get quite as much out of it as you might have hoped for. Uh, there's really no downside. Just just make sure you... Uh, unless you want to use LTN Manager. Uh, that's obviously a downside. But yeah. Um, 
that's how you do that. Can that be added mid-game? Uh, I believe so. If you are using bots, it'll steal... Yes, 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 that's a good point. Uh, if I have my bots out when I switch to the editor, um, the bots get teleported over here, and there's no getting them back. Hello, can I see your wall defense? Uh, sure. They're a bit rudimentary, but... Uh, we have some old gun turrets, some lasers, flamethrower walls, uh, turrets. Uh, over here we've got kind of the same thing, just a different shape. I don't even have automatic supply of repair packs and ammo to these things. Well, okay, the ones down here from before I got the rail block going have spaghetti rail delivering ammo. Um, but that's about it. We don't even have flamethrower turrets down here. And we've confirmed biters. Okay. Alright then, so I think what we'll do is... Reload that save. Delete uh, trim surface. And we'll continue without rampant. It's going to be very, very easy to defend compared to what we've been dealing with. Agatora Shizuma. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I might keep saving it under RIP UPS just in case. But I can't really see where it's going to go wrong after this. Okay. One thing I forgot to do is check with Rampant enabled if there's some mod settings that will drastically reduce the UPS impact, but I don't think there is. My plan was simply, we're going to have to remove all of the biters on any planet uh, that we have to deal with them. Um, but we didn't get that far before they completely tanked the UPS. I forgot to connect this, so we've got a whole extra train load of delivery cannon capsules. Actually, we've got like eight point... We've got like 8.8 .8 train loads of delivery cannon capsules here. And this train is going to be sitting here a while. But that's no big deal. I think we've finished this block. Cannon. Um, let's label it. This is going to Hagen. Okay. And we were just about done designing our storage block. Thank you for showing me. You're welcome. Krasis, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Still curious to see how just trimming with Rampant still goes on. Uh, I don't really want to... I don't really want to wait and see when Rampant will tank the UPS next. I, I did expect Rampant to be costly for UPS, and maybe eventually we'd remove it or something. Or, you know, it might be bad until we clear a planet, for example. But I did not expect it to be this sudden 
that the UPS would literally go from 60 to 20. Just started space myself, nice. This is a nice revision. Plague Rocket OP, indeed. Alright, uh, where should we put our storages? I think close to the core fragment pl uh, processing block would be a good way to go. That's the main thing we need storages for. Uh, also... Hmm... I have an idea. Oh, wait, no, I have an even better idea. Um, we don't even need to add some drop-offs. If we want to add some fluid storage and pick up. We can use some of the space in the middle for that. Did you plan to rebase to another planet? Yes. Uh, so the other planet is Hagen, down here. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of coal, and just in general, we're going to benefit from sending resources from Nalvis to Hagen, uh, if only to help it get, help get it going. But it's not just going to be to help get it going, because we'll be core mining from here as well. We'll get an indefinite resource supply getting exported. Uberskiff, good to see you again. Welcome Welcome, hope you're doing well. It's an ice cream planet. You mean another ice cream planet, because we've got so much snow on Hagen. Uh, okay, so I think our storage block is going to be over here. And did I blueprint it yet? I didn't really completely finish designing this, but that's probably fine. There's a couple of things I want to work out that involve giving it some signals and stuff. Storage. Fantastic. And this goes here. Is there any reason to rebase? Uh, yes. There's a few reasons. So, first of all, Hagen has no biters. We've got the entire planet to it ourselves. It's also got cryonite in infinite supply. Uh, it's also got... Let's see. Uh, is it just holmanite? I think there's also... Immersite. We've got... Uh, two exotic resources on here that we don't have access to on uh, on Nalvis. And in the long run, having our base at Hagen means the way spaceship works, uh, spaceships work, we're a lot closer to wherever the spaceships need to go. Because the travel time from, say... Nalvis orbit to somewhere in, uh, let's say, Basilius. It's a little bit misleading. Um, we, we know that space is enormous, but in this game, the travel time from Nalvis to the exit of the solar system is actually like maybe half of this journey. Uh, so having having our main base here is a lot more efficient in that respect especially when late game we're going to be using an anomaly which is basically equal distance it's only 10,000 distance from every other place we're going to be sending spaceships from our main base to Foenestra to their actual destination back to Foenestra, and back to our main base. Um, the total travel distance is a little bit more than 10,000 times 4 for the return trip, which is tiny. Uh, if you can find... like, let, Let's look at the Delta V from Nalvis. 
uh, for this place, for example. That's 27,000. Um, like, the shortest trips that you can get without exploiting the anomaly in interstellar space are about the same distance as what our travel distance to every location is going to be. Therefore, reducing the travel distance from our main base to the exit of the solar system is actually going to have a huge impact. Is this a mod? Yes, it is. It's a lot of mods, but especially Space Exploration and Crastorio 2, which are very, very big mods. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. Okay, uh, can I get rid of these casting machines? I'm pretty sure I placed them all a while ago. Casting machine. Chuck them in storage. And then I came back for rail mostly. Let's get some extra rail. I thought there would be some in here. Here it is. Do we have room for pumps? Just barely. We could do two fluids at each quarter. And I think... Well, for the moment, I only want to store raw resources that come out of core fragment processing. I haven't set up a voiding system for th Oh! That is something we could do with the extra space. That's actually going to be very convenient and save on logistics. So we already have... Hmm. No, I don't quite like that, because I only want to void resources that come from infinite sources. I could simply have it so that we don't... Yeah, 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 no, I like this. Um, okay, so when we take from a finite mine, like this one, we're going to set the encoded network ID to 1. And we're going to set the encoded network ID for the storage system to 2, so that basically LTN will not schedule drop-offs from here to here. Um, I wouldn't really want to put all of this 4.4 million iron into storage anyway. It's already much more densely stored here. Um, so... And it's only, it's only raw resources that we're going to be voiding. Stuff that comes out of core mining. So we'll still just have... Finite mines on a certain encoded network ID. Storage on a different particular encoded network ID. Both of those will be allowed to interact with all of the other stations normally. And we'll just have a crusher. Or maybe a number of crushers, it depends. We've got more than enough space in the middle here. 
Um, but yeah, if we end up completely full on a certain resource in storage, we're just going to start voiding it. And we'll only do this for the, the infinite resources, of course. I think that's probably going to be our solution to that problem. Uh, how about we put... Oh, I don't have a blue belt. Oh, I don't have a blue belt. Rip. That's weird. Am I not requesting it? Was my inventory too full? No, I'm not requesting it. That's actually kind of surprising. Should probably request about as much blue belt. And I might have to make more room for uh, various things. Is it worth to do more than one core miner? Absolutely. Uh, you do get diminishing returns it, with a square function. So, like, to get the equivalent of two of the first core miner, you need two squared. So, four. To get the equivalent of three, you need nine. And the equivalent of four, you need 16. So... It's up to you to decide where it's not worth it anymore, um, since you'll be paying more and more power uh, for each core fragment. But it's definitely worth it to have more than one. Um, it would be a tough sale to say, never build more than one. I need more inventory space. Why do I have a request for 40 of these? Probably because of a one-off. Uh, I don't normally need pump jacks. Get out of here. I could probably just handcraft on the occasion that I want a yellow belt. Because I would only be using it to deliberately bottleneck something in a controlled way at this point. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Magnus Totrop. Good to see you again. Uh, probably don't need more than ten... Can we pop whips? That's fine. Okay, so we're carrying plenty of red and blue. Uh, this seems fine for now. Now then, I'm thinking something like this is probably the neatest layout that we can get for that. And over here, not sure actually, I definitely want to leave room, hmm. I would prefer if we're going to have a fluid. Oh wait, we're going to have two fluids. Ideally. I should do this in the design area. Um, something like this. I definitely like this part. could maybe change this a little bit. I kind of want to be able to do this the same way, but at the same time... That's definitely in the way if we were going to do that. Is this your rubbish block? Uh, yes and no. It's our storage block, and I think I'm just going to use the storage block 
to void anything that we need to if it gets completely full. So we're not going to have a separate, like, train request system to get rid of stuff. Is this okay? I guess it doesn't look too bad. And we could have one, two, three, four. Um, and fluid containers. Oh. Oh. That. Uh, that's probably going to be okay. I will have to make some exceptions to how I place the constant combinators. I guess we don't have to bottleneck that through there. And just put this over here. And this one it doesn't quite work out. How about move this down a bit? Okay, yeah, I like that. This one will have to go this way. It's not as neat as I would like. We could do better if we didn't have these rebalances for the solids. Hmm. If only I could get that down there. Wait, this doesn't go anywhere. One, two, one, two. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh. Uh. So close and yet so far. I wish I could use steel pipe and regular pipe to have these two not connected. Um, what if I just... These two are actually the same fluid, so that... Wait, what? Oh, then why did I have this going up here? No, they're not the same fluid. We're gonna have one to the north, one to the south. Um, I can see one way I could definitely make this a bit more symmetric. No, I was going to have this go over here and this go here, but then that would be the two different fluids. They have to crisscross. And this one goes there. And then... This can go here, and this is one off. Oh, I think no, we're one off again. I think this pipe might have to go up this way. So something like this. That's not quite right. Is that as good as it gets? Alright, let's connect... 
Right, let's put some sample fluids in these so that we can see exactly how that fits together. Uh, water. And... How about oil? Can't really see which is which down here. So water north, water south, oil south, oil north. I did see that coming. Is there some way of increasing bot battery in SE? I think you have the pipes mixed. North is going to be both sides, I think. Uh, if north is going to be both sides, then it might be a bit more tricky to do it the way we want. Water, water could go here and here, I guess. But then south... If we don't care too much about throughput, we can make it a lot neater. Um, and since this is storage, maybe we don't. It, it's only adding, like, a couple of seconds as well if we make it slower than it would otherwise be. So... We could just go like this. And that could go to either side. Oh, that's mixing fluids now. Actually, let's just remove that and put it back. And, of course, it messes up our bulk rail loaders. Okay. Oh, and the unloaders as well. Shouldn't have done that. Now we've lost the wiring. Alright, I feel like north is going to go to the left. And actually it'll probably still have pretty decent throughput if we put another pump here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six tiles of pipe maximum before we get another pump. It's not going to be too slow. Um, and then... On this side, we can just do it this way. Whoops. Um, rip that piece of pipe. Okay. Don't quite have room. Oh, we could do it like this. And once again, we have just enough space for a pump. Yeah, I like that better. That is way neater than anything we were going to end up with. Alright, so we can have two solids, two fluids um, dropped off and picked up here. And we've got plenty of room here to add crushes. Uh, and we can simply take from one of these big storages if it's completely full. Nice. Right, let's copy that over here. And bots, do you think? We'll need some substations. Nice and symmetrical if we can. We cannot. Unless I remove... Uh, unless I move those... Uh, uh, 
belts, which I might just do. We can't quite put that there. Oh no. I'm not really seeing a way. Do you need a way to load the fluids, or do the tanks connected to the loaded... Oh, right. That's... A... That's why I was moving this uh, constant combinator, actually. Because we're going to have to put pipes here. And here. And hopefully... That will not be complicated. Uh, that's... A slight problem. That's going to mess with the throughput. Not to mention put things going around in circles. Hmm. I could pipe this like, like so. I hate it, but it it works. And this can go here. Are we going to have something just as ugly on the other side? We can't actually fit it that way. It's going to be a little bit different. That's not that bad. It's kind of got a symmetry to it. It's going to be a little bit slow compared to normal, uh, to load our train with fluid. But that's okay. It's for storage. There's room on the inside for the left one? Uh, this is true. Yeah, that's, that's much better. Although, it makes this bit asymmetrical. But, it's probably fine. Alternatively, I could give up on that pump. And just do it like this. That's a lot neater. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this because storage is... But, like, taking from storage is the exception rather than the rule. And then we want... Substation... I'm going to have to separate these a bit more. If I want to have the full belt of throughput going through here. I'd have to have an underground like this, which means this would go here. I think that's as neat as it's going to get. Unless we were to put our splitter here, which we wouldn't have room for. Oh. Okay, this might be a bit neater. We put our splitter here. And just underground that straight up there. And then... Like so. I think that looks better. And we've still got way more than enough room for our crusher. Fixed, indeed. So this is going to go here. It does make it a lot easier to read what's happening here as well, at a glance. I'm liking this. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's add the crusher. I 
I imagine one crusher for each resource is going to be enough. We would, of course, have to add something to turn stone into something else, like landfill, uh, if we're doing stone. Oh, wow. That's actually super convenient and neat, the way that fits. Except the train station is in the way. No! We were going to be able to have these just go straight to the crusher. In fact, we can do that on this side. Which just makes uh, the messiness of the one on the left all the worse. It's like the biggest thing we've been able to move around with Piccadillys. Oh, we also will need room for decision making. So we only want this to go down if it's full. And... This is... There's only one place this can fit. Unless we move the constant combinator again. Rules Chansey, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? Did this light just turn off? What time of day is it? It is morning. Yeah, it's just getting bright enough that the light's turned off. Okay. Uh, so let's go down here, I guess. I don't love that that is the only one that's going to have to turn a corner, but what can you do? Great, I hope your factory's doing well. Yeah, quite well. Um, I would like these to line up, though. And I hope they're not going to be in, in, in each other's way if we go for radial symmetry. They are. That's unfortunate. What if we put this snugly down here? That actually works. So I guess we'll just have to live with the, uh... The slight offset there. Unless we have them share a crusher or something. Don't particularly want to do that. Um, I could put... The crushers, like, here... I was going to say nah, but actually, let's have a look. Oh, it could be a lot more symmetrical if we do it this way. Um, that needs a red wire. That goes there. It's going to have a corner. I guess there's no real need for an underground there. And this one is not going to line up the same way. Uh, it sort of mostly could, though. Oh, no, it couldn't. Because we need three tiles for the decision-making for that one. Well, we could put this here. It's not going to be the exact same distance, though, right? Because of rail asymmetry. Will these crushes fit when the pattern is rotated? That's my hope. Uh, so yeah, that's definitely going to be longer. Six tiles versus five. But nevertheless, I think I like the look of that. And... 
How does that fit? That fits really nicely. And of course, if we want the option to void fluid, all we need is a flare stack, I think it's called. A flare stack and a pump for the decision making. And we have room for those right here. Actually, I think the flare stack has a particular rotation, it does, but it's not so much that we can't make it basically symmetrical. So this part can actually be generic because there's no difference in stack sizes. for fluids. Just going to use a red wire here, and we're going to say if anything is greater than... yeah, we're only reading from the fluid, so that's fine. Uh, anything greater than like 199,000. So if this is basically full... I'll just double check, this is 200k, right? Yes. I guess that doesn't quite rotate. And the flare stack, I believe, like the crusher, doesn't have a recipe set. It's uneven, but it ends up being so neat. Yeah, I think this really is about the best we could have done. I should probably take this to uh, the editor. And we'll rotate that around four times. Oh, we got trees. Get out of here. Not in my blueprint, please. Fantastic. And... Can we copy... Can we copy, paste, rotate? Does that work? I think it's only cut and paste. Oh, cut and, like, undo. That's a problem. That and... Select new contents for blueprint. With the bulk rail unloaders. Trees, no. <laughs> Is it better to convert resource to landfill before putting it into crusher? Uh, we do need to do that with sand, but... I mean, it might be. I, I imagine the rate at which we're going to be voiding resources is going to be less than one crusher per resource. I would hope so. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We've got plenty of room left over in here. I actually really like how much space there is here. It's not that much, like, quote-unquote, wasted space, but we've got plenty of room to make changes to this uh, if we need to. Okay, uh, so that is going to be our storage block. We can't actually select new contents. Let's just delete that. New blueprint, snap to grid, 8624. And I don't think I even set up the train stop names or anything, but they're going to be different every time, so I don't really need those to be set up. Uh, storage. So let's see, this is... Uh, 16 resources, 8 fluids, 8 solids. 8-8 eight, eight storage. And 
just to double check, that snaps to grid correctly. Fantastic. And I'll put the storage there. All right, let's uh, let's build this thing. All of this other stuff should actually. There's going to be constant combinators that are in the way. Just double check that we got them all. Fantastic. It should work if we just place our blueprint on top of that now. It might be missing some wire connections because the loaders were already there. It's probably fine. All right, pushes. I think we're going to be one crusher short. I wonder if... It would take a combinator, but I could set it to have one train load delivered to storage uh, as kind of like normal priority and then it drops to low priority after that but then we would have to check that for two resources at once if there's a fluid i'm just not going to worry about it i was thinking of basically this could be where we launder away um like short trains being able to pick up resources without having to rebalance all of our outputs all the time. So like, at our iron ore pickup from core fragment processing, we don't have a rebalancing system. That's just balanced by a splitter. We only ever take it with two cargo wagons at once. But because we bring iron here, short trains can pick it up from here and it'll rebalance itself, and we don't have to have rebalances everywhere. I guess the fluid doesn't really matter. I could have it a low priority pickup, as well as a low priority drop off. So we're basically going to make it a low priority drop off unless it's got less than one train load of solids. That would only require a decider combinator and a constant combinator. Or even just a decider if we only make the low priority like negative one. It looks like the balances don't get their wires. The balances. Oh, this one's missing a wire. Oh, these ones? Oh, that's true as well. The balances do indeed not get their wires. Because the loaders were already here. Uh, you know what? I could just remove the loaders. And put the blueprint down again. And that's going to reduce our chances of a mistake. I think. Or is that... We're probably going to have to remove the tanks as well. Okay. Grab our blueprint. Place that here. There should be two red wire connections from each of the bulk rail loaders and just one red wire going straight to the pumps each time. Uh, maybe I simply missed this one earlier.
which should mean that there is a similar mistake over here. Yeah, there is. Okay. Uh, we do indeed need one more crusher. What else are we missing over this way? Some blue belt. Let's go back and grab that. Crusher. Whoops, that's not a crusher. We need 30, we need 20 iron gear wheels that the bots haven't brought yet. There we go. Let them bring the automation cores if they can. I'll just craft here. Alright, back we go, and we should really update our blueprint after this as well. So was it just the four wire connections that I missed? Or three, rather? Done. Oh, we need blast axe. And I can't make enough. We can grab steel from here. Oh, did I actually get enough? No, I think we're one off. One off. Okay. Steel. Flare stack. Flare stack. Where is it? There it is. We don't make these often, so I don't have them automated. Easier to just handcraft them and carry them around. Right then, so our requester station is going to be looking for iron and copper. Uh, before we do that, let's take our uh, iron pickup and make that We'll do encoded network ID 1 for the finite resources. And encoded network ID 2 for the storage. So we're never taking straight from here to storage. And therefore we're never going to void finite resources. Uh, let's see. Where are the other mines? Oh, is over here somewhere. Boazunga, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We also have stone here. Oh. Oh, we never finished this one properly. Let's just copy this. And we'll have to remember to go over there and add that constant combinator. Yes, same to you. Thank you. Uh, rare metals. Encoded network ID 1. Any other mines around here? We haven't tapped this coal yet. I think that's all of the... 
Oh, there should be copper. Yeah, here it is. Coded network ID 1. I think that's all of the finite resources we're picking up going into the rail network. Uh, we're not going to be storing brood oil here. I mean, we could, but no, I don't think so. If I did want to store crude oil, I would store it somewhere else. We're never going to flare crude oil. Uh, oh, wait. No, we do need to do it for crude oil, because crude oil is a byproduct of core fragment cr uh, processing. So where do we pick up our crude? Um, is this just going straight in? I think I have at least one crude oil pickup somewhere. Here it is. Uh, encoded network ID 1. And here it is. Oh, I should probably turn the station names on. That might help. Encoded... Why can't I... There we go. Encoded network ID 1. So if you set an ID, it will only check for that ID when creating schedules, but no ID means no check. Uh, basically, the default encoded network ID for any station, uh, which is negative one, means that this station is allowed to interact with any other station. Um, but it, it's allowed to interact with stations of any encoded network ID. Uh, and that works in binary. So if we do a three, uh, it's actually both encoded network ID one and encoded network ID two. Um, but if we set encoded network ID one on this iron mine and encoded network ID two on an iron drop off, LTN will not set a schedule between these two stations. That makes total sense, indeed. Yeah, it's surprisingly easy once you get it. Um, like, when I first used it last playthrough, I thought it was going to be a huge job uh, defining which stations can go to which other stations once I had some interactions that I didn't want to happen. But it's really more like we're setting the exceptions. Just a fancy bit mask, yes, yes. So by using uh, bit shifting, we're storing... Well, I mean, technically whenever you store like an integer that is a number, um, you are storing a bunch of ones and zeros. It's just pulling the ones and zeros out of that number so that we can store a bunch of yeses and nos as one number. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Let's see. From core mining, we are getting coal. We already did coal, stone, iron, copper, rare metals, and uranium. I don't have a uranium mine that is connected to the rail network yet, so we don't have to worry about that. It's going to be a long time before we're avoiding any uranium in any case. Uh, we've also got water. Uh, we've already got a flare stack, actually, at the water. I could do the same thing for the other fluids here, but I'd definitely rather store it first. So... Mineral water, crude oil, and pyroflux. Um, we're going to be bringing here. So let's do iron and copper first. And we'll do mineral oil and pyroflux. It'll be the same colors. Uh, let's see. Request stack threshold, request threshold. That's good. We're going to do... Oh, first of all, encoded network ID 2. And we're going to do iron ore. 
We'll just start with a couple of train loads. Actually, why don't I calculate? Um, we can definitely fit 12 train loads of either solid resource before there's going to be a problem. Let's call it 10, just to make sure we leave plenty of slack. Uh, so 80 stacks, uh, 800 stacks times 50, 40,000. 40,000 iron, 40,000 copper. That's almost reaching the request threshold for fluids. Uh, mineral water? We're aiming for... I was going to say we're aiming for 200k. Which is kind of true. We do actually want... If there's nowhere else for it to go, we do want this to go over. So that we'll start deleting some of it. And Pyrofox. And that should be it. Let's just call this storage. And I guess we'll name it for those four state uh, those four resources. Uh mineral water and Pyroflux. Fantastic. Should be able to switch that on now, but I want to set these first. Provide stack threshold, provide threshold. That should be fine, actually. Let's just name the stations. So this is going to be iron ore and uh, mineral water. Provider. Actually, I'll just call it storage. And that's not quite right, because we've got the storage chest to represent the requester, and the storage chest to represent the pickup. Should I maybe use a different symbol? What would be appropriate? Bitmath is fun, and anyone who says otherwise is lying to you? Oh no. Null Cascade, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Buffer? Yeah, probably buffer. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Didn't miss anything in chat, did I? Pink pajamas, good to see you again. Negative one is one's... Is all ones, period. The sign bit is one if negative. Oh. I understand. Wait a minute. No, I don't. Did I have already a name in base? I don't know if you did. Mid Jagus. Uh, I don't necessarily have anything against doubling up on it. I don't have them in alphabetical order or anything, and it's not like we can search. Oh, there it is. Mijagus. Andy? Okay, then. Uh, let me just do it from here, so I don't have to remember. A, N, D, Y. Just have to go over there to physically place it. For example, 0, 1, 1, 1 is 7, and then 1, 4, 1s is negative 1. But isn't four ones, uh, seven plus eight, fifteen? Or is... 
Are you saying if the number is four bits, then that's a negative one? Any signal number that is all one bits is negative one. On a lot of systems, not all, because exotic machines. Okay, so it is kind of an arbitrary decision. Sort of. I mean, it is, but it makes a lot of sense. Alright, let's name this as buffer. So we'll use the storage chest to say we're putting it into storage, and the buffer chest to say this is our buffer. Uh, and this one is going to be copper and pyroflux. Buffer. Whoops. And I think the combinator settings for these ones don't need to change, except they should be a low priority picker. Provide priority negative one. And request priority should be negative one. We could also put, like, a decider combinator from on each to say, if iron in uh, this one container is less than one, less than forty stacks, then increase the request priority by one. So it's back up to normal. That way... That way we can have short trains pick up iron if we want. So 2,000. We could make it two train loads at least. Alright, so this has normal priority until there's two train loads of stuff. Uh, it has lower than normal pickup priority all the time. And once we have two train loads of physical items, it'll have uh, less than normal request priority. Is how that's going to work. And we'll do the same... Thing, uh, over here, except the red wire is going to have to reach a bit further. Uh, let's see, up, uh, that goes there, and that needs to reach over there. I guess I could do it across here. Wait, no, that's... Yeah, 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 this is the same station. That's actually correct. I think that's about as neat as this is going to get, maybe? How far can this reach? Uh, I don't despise that. It could be worse. Oh wait, but that's going to end up being above normal priority when both of them are missing. Hmm. Maybe that's fine? What if we're missing one resource entirely? We're going to end up filling this up and voiding resource. Okay. Okay. That's... that's not great. I might just not worry about the priority stuff. The... priority until we have a minimum amount thing. Otherwise I'd have to add even more combinators. 
but I think this is about right. I think we are ready. Let's turn this on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We need to check which fluid we're picking up. Um, that's not going to reach, so maybe I'll just bring it across there. And this piece of belt will be unconditional. We're just using it to piggyback our wire across. So this is mineral water. If we get a less than zero signal, a negative one, from the logistic train stop output, it means the train is trying to get rid of that fluid. And here we're going to go same thing, but for pyroflux. How much mineral water do we have? 22k, that's actually not a train load. 41k pyroflux. We will eventually see pyroflux tested, um, but we're not there yet. That bad? Wait, what's happening? Oh, rolling blackouts. Yikes. Yeah, I'm sure all of that is in good hands. Kappa. The first bit works out to be an indicator of whether the number is negative or not. If the number is signaled. Oh, the binary? Okay. Just. Rigged noodle. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay. We should see iron delivered here, though, right? Oh, it's negative priority, but we don't quite have... I'm actually quite surprised, considering how much I've been putting this off. I would have thought as soon as I built this, um, there would be some demand for it. We've got practically infinite iron from the mines, so where we're dropping off iron should already be saturated. So the moment we get one train load of iron or copper, which is now, uh, we should... That's not quite balanced. Uh, we should see a train scheduled to pick this up. Oh, both at the same time. And it is indeed coming to storage. Fantastic. Nice. Simultaneous uh, testing. Beautiful. We're not going to get the fluids coming in for a minute. A emo. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so... We just need to say this has to be full, and then we're going to crush it. So let's see, 320 times 50 is 16k. If iron or... Uh, equals 16k. Then, and only then, send it to the crusher. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't put filters here. Oh crap. Alright. We can fix this. Uh, let's see. Iron ore. Iron ore. Copper ore. But, oh, we'll just wait for that drain and then we'll move it around. 
the default LTN mod settings are so bad, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, my opinion is, in fact, that they are a trap. The, the default LTN settings are an elaborate trap to mess up your train system and completely confuse you as to how it happened. To each their own in terms of what settings you actually give it, but I strongly, strongly recommend uh, changing them around in any case. Have a look at them. Spend a good bit of time checking them. Iron, and iron, and iron, and iron and copper, actually. Just put it all back in the drop-off, and it should sort itself out. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, that's fine. We have filters. It's not going to get rid of my stuff. You know what? Why don't I just do this? Just don't control click now. And we're already picking up the copper. That's surprising. Oh no, uh, there's one little detail I forgot, and this is another great example of what the um, uh, encoded network IDs are good for, and when you would want to use them. We don't want LTN scheduling a pickup from of copper from here to here, so all we're going to do is give this the same encoded network ID as the finite pickups. Or to put it another way, the opposite encoded network ID from this station. I thought it was weird that the negative one priority uh, provider immediately had a request. And that, while our resources are totally saturated. What was the worst setting? Uh, it's actually a combination of settings. So, for example, the default request and provide threshold are only a thousand. The uh, finish loading setting adds a two second wait so that if the inserter arms are still swinging, for example, uh, the train won't leave until two seconds of inactivity has passed. So a train will be scheduled to pick up only about a thousand resources and it'll wait until it's completely full if there's enough resources there. It will then take those resources to a station that did not have room for more than about a thousand resources. And, uh, let's see, delivery timeout? Oh, that's a different one. Stop timeout. Duration in seconds before trains are forced out of a station. So after two minutes, that train that has resources still in it will go back to the depot with those resources after it tried to overfill that station and then when it's scheduled to make a delivery next time it'll bring those resources and you can imagine where that goes um also the one i was about to talk about delivery timeout uh unfortunately you can't completely disable this but the default is that if a train is stuck in traffic for 10 minutes, it's assumed lost, like destroyed. So even if you have a train limit of one, it'll send another train and another train. Shouldn't the storage be high priority pickup? 
otherwise you will start crushing stuff as long as your mind's as strong. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know actually, now that you mention it. Uh, yeah, no, you're right, this should probably be high priority pickup. Or above normal, anyway. Yeah, we'll take from here before we take from the mines. I don't know, it does... If I make it lower priority, it does give us burst potential. But... Hmm... I mean, that's what storage is good for. But the main reason we have storage in the rail network is not really for that burst potential. It's... It's so that we have a place to put um, side outputs. Speaking of which, we need to do raw rare metals, like now. Shout out to my main man, t -Hex, for being the only person I know over 6 foot 6. Wait, is 180 six foot six? Or over it? Isn't it like exactly six foot six? Is this train confused? What's going on? Oh, it's... Wait, what? It's waiting until it has copper, and then it wants to go here. Why is it not completely... Oh, because there's no copper here. Oh, I see what happened. I didn't expect it to leave in that direction. I guess that makes sense, actually. Because it wouldn't be able to get the direction it needs. 198? That's a lot. He is a dinosaur. <laughs> I am amazed that I could make a valid suggestion. Uh, I don't think you should be. Even if I am capable, it doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. And that is a big if. Okay, so we need to do the same for uh, raw rare metals. And what do I want to pair with it? Maybe uranium? Let's put those over here. I think I would like them to... I should have done iron and copper down the bottom if I wanted it to line up the same way it does here. But it's fine. We'll put raw rare metals down the bottom right. So that's here. I should probably include like a fish filter or something so that by default these won't work in the blueprint and up here is going to be uranium uh uranium ore that is and i don't know what fluids i want here let's see we've done these two, that just leaves crude oil, actually. We've, we've already got a system for voiding water if it piles up too much. And we don't exactly need spare storage for water. It refills, like, instantly over here. As far as we're concerned. We're only using water trains when the water throughput is significantly low, so that we can just put something wherever we want. Uh, so I guess that just leaves crude oil. Let's put crude down this side. Oh, and I need to do this. Crude oil goes here. I don't know how many other fluids we're going to be getting from infinite sources. 
well, on this planet at least, it's probably just going to be crude from the core, uh, core mining. So I think I'll just put, like, double crude oil storage here. Which means we don't actually need the red wire this time. Alright, so we're looking for... Let's check these settings. In fact, why don't I copy them and really quickly turn this off? Okay. Uh, we want 40k of raw, rare metals, 40k uranium, and a crude oil, Let's set that to 400k. And I already did set it so that we won't be taking crude oil from pickup stations. It's only from the core fragment processing. Okay. That should be fine. And copy this over here. Fantastic. I'm getting the itch to pave things. Even though we don't plan to be on this planet that long, but this is so much harder to look at because of the ground textures than it might otherwise be. Um, I think that's it. So we're going to name our station... Uh, uranium and what was the other one? Raw rare metals and crude oil. Can we raid Jacob Geller at the end of the stream? He's doing a 24 hour, hour charity live stream. Uh, sure. Seems good. You can pave with just rock or stone. That's true, but. I don't think stone right next to rail would make things... Th there wouldn't be much of a contrast. It wouldn't be that much easier to see. You could also get pyroflux and mineral water from coal mining. Yeah, we already uh, did that. We haven't got... F we haven't hit 50k from coal mining for either of those resources. And or we've... Actually, we probably have, but we've put those resources elsewhere. I don't think we're ever going to get Pyroflux delivered to the storage on this planet. So it's really just a an academic exercise at this point. Mineral water could be a little different, maybe. Where did we use mineral water? I don't recall. Oh, was it chlorine or something? No. I don't remember consuming mineral. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so that's empty. Um, our lithium is indirectly just a product of coal mining mineral water. Because I don't think I've set up a mineral water mine yet. Should probably hurry up with that. We've got three million right there. Anyway, let's get this finished. Um, I think it basically already is, except for the output station names. So we're doing... Which side was this? Raw Rare Metals. And Crude Oil. Buffer. And this one... Wait, no, that was right. No, I just undid it. Oh, no. Raw rare metals. Crude oil. 
upper chest. Copy that over here. We're going to change one symbol. And that is uranium. I didn't bother with this setting yet either. What's this train's problem? Oh, it's the same thing again. Because one of these was scheduled to take it from here back to where it came from. No, it's actually going elsewhere. Why is this so imbalanced? It should have all gone through the splitter. Yeah, it should have been even. Uh, I guess I'll just do it this way. Now we're limited to half a belt. There we go. So we should get exactly half and half here. Right? Oh, there's a little bit of... There's a tiny bit of iron in this... In these two loaders. So there isn't quite an entire train load of iron available. Which means... We probably shouldn't... We probably shouldn't let the... Uh, the provider stations think that this is available. Or it's just gonna... It's only gonna cause a problem the first time. So maybe that's fine, actually. All my stations load from one end and get balanced with inserters slash circuit network. Indeed. Looks like buffer don't work for fluid. 400k requested, 190k will be stored in each fluid tank. Uh-oh. That's 200k of each. After that, no new request for fluid will be created. I mean... It'll come in loads of 50k, and this will end up having 200k. We're going to vent a little bit of it, and then it'll sit here. Yeah, it does need to be a high priority pickup so that we empty it. It's not going to be as high priority as these. Which is probably fine, actually. Hello, Sigma B. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I think that's... Alright, are we ready to switch this thing on? I think we are... And we should get uh, raw rare metals delivered here immediately. Oh, also uranium. How much uranium do we have? That's almost three train loads. That is significantly more than I thought. Should probably hurry up and do a block for processing uranium. Except I think we still don't have cover X. Yeah, we need to go to another bloody planet to get cover eggs. Need to bring the missing bit of each resource manually. Yeah. Just to seed it. Uh, if it was copper, then the copper train would be blocking this. I have a better idea. 
we're simply going to increase the provide stack threshold slightly. And that's going to account... We're never going to have, like... Uh, unless we're doing this with a resource with an extremely small stack size, uh, plus one stack size is going to account for this. Okay. These all have the same settings. Fantastic. All right, we're just going to send this train on its merry way. Wait, what? It said it was looking for copper? What? Wait, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 no. Come back. Uh, where is, where is this train? Oh, no, I've lost track of it. Um, where is it? Where did our train just go? It was this one. Okay, could you please go over here? before you do anything silly. And how was it... How did that happen if it was looking for copper? Oh, I forgot that. I forgot that step. Okay. Um, on this stop, we need to tell it there is no copper. Uh, and there's no pyroflux available here. High reflux. Okay. And similarly, there is no iron. And the 10 million? Are they... Uh, and there's no mineral water. Whoops. Mineral water? Okay, so that's basically gonna tell this station there's no iron here. Uh, let's just move this train here and send it back to the depot. Manually send it to drop off, indeed. Wait, what? No, 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 no. Come back, come back. Wait for empty cargo. <laughs> Do not have just... Zero second, no wait condition. Uh, storage systems in rail networks are slightly complicated. Just, just, just a wee bit. Alright, so this provider station sees all of this as being available. Except it's got signals saying, actually, you definitely don't have copper or pyroflux. And we increased the provide stack threshold slightly so that it won't think... Uh, it, it won't think that this little bit of iron here is available. I think you set the copper picker to say no copper. Uh, oh, you're right. Yeah, because these are a bit counterintuitive. This station is actually for iron, and this station is actually for copper. So that just means the blue ones are on the left with the blue resources, and vice versa. It's one way to think of it. Pick up, not picker, yes. Alright, so that should be working now. And that means we also need to go negative a million uranium. And down here, negative a million rare, uh, raw rare metals. 
Um, since they're both on the same fluid, we don't have to worry about that one. And here come a lot of raw rare metals, actually. Since we were completely backed up on that, it was uh, it was actually stopping core mining earlier. Fantastic. All right, I think now would be a good time to get another coal mine going. Um, I could def definitely see myself landfilling that bit of water. To ask a potentially silly question, how does setting negative one million copper not make it a requesting station? Because uh, I'll actually just show you what I'm doing here before I show you this. What we are effectively doing is this. Request threshold. Negative a much larger number than a million. And uranium ore negative a million. So we're setting the request threshold so high that we'll never reach it even with this number. And we're lying to the station saying that uh, despite the fact that on this green wire there is copper ore, uh, we're sending it another signal to subtract a million. So we're going to be telling it, even if there's lots of copper ore here, we're going to say there's like negative 990,000 uh, uranium. And we're simply setting the request threshold so high that it isn't reached and we're doing that with the mod settings um, so we don't so that's implicit clear enough also it is requesting but the threshold is super high yes with the amount of rare metals you have they should be called common metals right Um, okay. I think that is working. I think now's about as good a time as any for a little break. Uh, I might just leave this running unless it turns out... Oh, I just realized we can use LTN screensaver now. Uh, what was I looking for though? Make sure the biters haven't destroyed anything. It's been a while since they destroyed anything. Okay, we'll do some words on stream. I'll take a little break. Time for words, indeed. Oh, and time for LTN screensaver. Is it F12? I did just save, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm scared of pressing certain things because there are a couple of ways we can crash the game now. F12, turning on screensaver, fantastic. Does that work? I don't think it does. Oh? But it's still... It's still showing map stuff. Pixel art screensaver, indeed. Uh, that's really weird. So it's tracking it via the map. 
even if we do use the nav set. Uh oh. Uh, help. Okay, there we go. Yeah, un unfortunately, we can't get God Vision with the LTN screensaver. Looks like you need radars, yeah. Alright, we'll start Words on Stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Ooh, almost another perfect. One more. You guys got this, I believe. So close. Fantastic, though. Next time we'll be doing level 9. Let's pause that for now. And back to the game. Uh, so, an advanced radar would actually cover most of these. Let's grab a couple. How do I make them? Uh, we just need rare metals, actually. Which I believe I've got here somewhere. Rare metals. We've got a bunch of enriched rare metals. But I don't know if we had the pyroflux. Uh-oh. How did this happen? We're only looking for 8k. Oh, because that's not actually connected. Oh, no. Um... Yeah, I can see... I can see how this happened. But... What are you gonna do? Rebalance this a little bit. Let's go fix that. Uh... Brent... Brent Gamer NL1000. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Was it the steel? It'd be the steel, because it was coke. Alright. There we go. And I'll just use even distribution. Fantastic. Uh, I hope we didn't have a similar mistake. That's not the same mistake, but we're still facing the same problem here. 24k coal. We've got... Huh? Why is this imbalanced? What? What? Oh. I bet I know the answer. Uh, I'm guessing... This doesn't actually keep it balanced. What's our rate, max rate of coal here? Uh, 48. So more than two... Oh, it's only two belts. I'm guessing that this was only outputting a half belt. Or it was only taking in a half belt. Over here. When the production was slow. So it ended up imbalanced. To be fair, it's a lot harder for us to control what we see in the Factorio part. That was more fun than the stream, but... Uh, wow. Zura's banned. GG Zura. Shaking and crying. Um, are there any other stuck trains? This one was scheduled a while ago. To bring way too much coke. Hmm. Is this one going to be okay? Yeah, it is. How do I make this go away? I think I just have to put a chest here temporarily. Once this is empty, or there's enough room for it, put this over here instead. Or over here? Is that...? It doesn't work when we use picker dollies. Okay. Good to know. Why...? Why...? What... what the...? Oh! Oh! I think I broke it. 
I think this is coming from the bulk rail unloader because it thinks there's still a chest there. Fascinating. So if you drop something here and there's a chest in the way, that's how that works. Okay. Uh, in that case, pick this up. Don't pick a dollies it. Put this here. Pick this up. And then we're good. Actually, get rid of those. What am I doing? Okay. And until this is sorted, we'll put some inserters here. You can place request to slash provider chests on that. Yeah. And it doesn't understand that Picker Dollies doesn't, uh, exists. So if you drag it away with Picker Dollies, it thinks there's still a chest there. Baylone, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. Are there any other confused trains, uh, in our network? Doesn't look like it. Uh, except for this one, which was just because I forgot to connect a wire. We can just leave that there, I think. Uh, I changed my mind. Even though we've got almost no demand for short trains. Um, why don't we just... Take these temporarily. How much are we trying to empty? Too much. Let's get a stack inserter. How have you moved that chest without destroying it? Uh, it's the mod is called Picker Dollies, and I'm just pointing it. One of these, holding shift and using the cursor keys. It also lets you rotate combinators in a way that you can't with vanilla while preserving wire connections. It won't let you uh, make longer than usual wire connections, as you can see here. But it does preserve all of the wire connections, combinator settings, and so on. Yay for autoclaves finally clearing Nalvis. Congratulations. Uh, Vod, Vod Tix, uh, Abby and Lai, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I should just take this and shove it in here. There we go. And then we can turn this around. Okay, uh, what else before we go back to Hagen? Um, I'm just realizing though, our delivery cannons... Oh. Never mind. We actually made a lot more ingots than I thought we did already. But no steel ingots. Uh, steel ingots are missing pyroplux, obviously. I think I might make this a higher priority. Compared to the other two. Um, I could go ahead and summon... Oh, we've got 49k. W yeah, we don't need... We don't need to force this delivery, it's about to happen. Um, but I will definitely do some more core mining, if only to get more Pyroflux. Uh, which reminds me, I wanted to landfill this bit. So let's go get some landfill. And a core mining drill. My name is a tongue twister. I think in English it should be pronounced Wojtek. Wojtek. 
I'll try to remember. Wojtek. Uh, there should be coal mining drills actually down here. I remember where those are. Approximately. Oh, it's where all the drills are. We don't. It's weird to me that we've got coal mining drills before we've got the biggest regular drills. Um, and we also need concrete. Like the bear? The bear? Is there a bear called Wojtek or something? Some, one of the similar sounds? We're probably going to need more landfill than we think. I always thought there should be a pre-space age variant of coal mining drills named Quarry or something. I suppose. Let's put the drill down and rescue the fishies. Rescue them from going to waste anyway. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And let's see exactly how much landfill we want to use here. This is the part where I'm really glad I have nice fill. I think we're going to run out. Yep. That was way more landfill. Uh, I mean, I thought we would only have to do one corner, but even so, 300 wasn't nearly enough. Was it three or 400? I don't know. Speaking of too much inventory, I'll go and turn the stone that I've got into landfill. I'll take that. Wojtek was the name of the bear that served in a Polish artillery squad in World War II. It's pronounced the same way. Uh, so Wojt... What was it? Wojtek? Wojtek. Wojtek. Okay. He was officially enlisted to cover his food costs, but he'd also carry around giant cannon shells with each arm, but it takes several men to move one. Wow. And what little landfill we have is gone. Fantastic. Alright, so we should need, what, another hundred or two to finish this? Oh, I ran out of rail as well. Back we go. And it's gone, yes. Landfill is like that. Let's drop this off directly. It really does amaze me how long it's taken uh, that chest to fill from our infinite uh, biomatter. Like, I would either expect it to be empty or full in a relatively short amount of time. This has been going for just days and days and days and days.
Uh, what was I coming back for? Trail and landfill. Uh, I'm not going to be able to fit enough landfill. Okay. Turn off personal logistics and auto trash. That doesn't actually turn off the trash slots, actually. Where am I going? Down here? I just need to skedaddle before the bots take stuff out of my trash slots. Give me all of that. Fantastic. If that's not enough for our little pond, I don't know what is. Tiny Goliath. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Landfill. Don't really need this part. I'm going to have to put down the blueprint again anyway. And rescue the fishies. Landfill. And that's probably it. Rescue. Yes. Hmm. Really, I should get rid of those straight rails as well. Wait. Oh, we missed, missed a spot. Damn it. Now I'm going to have to put the whole blueprint down again, just to be sure. Whatever. That looks neat enough. Let's pretend. This is going to be a really good spot for something that's thirsty for water. But for now... I want... This spot right here to be where we pick up our four fragments. Should have done it that way because I need to use this. We are doing two containers for core fragments, yes. Okay. And splitter. Right about here, probably. Does it reach that far? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. I love the modded underground distances. And power... Uh, I should bring an accumulator, actually. Like I should have done up here in the first place, but I don't think we had accumulators. And just cut off this belt if accumulator charge is not full. Uh, let's see. Inputs like so... And rip. And rip the writing. I put the name of the person I talked about rating earlier in DMs. Okie dokie. Can do. And we need a pickup station. Should be fine. We'll need some power. Uh, let's go get those accumulators. I wish the power grid graph would show you clearly exactly what the minimum charge of accumulators was each night. But now that I think of it, we're probably... No, we are avoiding spending this on accumulators.
be good chat. I put the all right. Take care, Zora. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, accumulator. I need two, and I don't need any more landfill right this instant. And I need to avoid the bots taking my stuff. Let's just take a stack. Wouldn't it be better to have the core miners mine into a chest and then use loader to put it on the belt? Wait, what? Loader to put it on the belt. Oh, right, so it uses both sides. Yeah, we can do that. Um, but the core mining drill is going to be less than half a belt anyway, so it really doesn't matter. And that's only going to get worse as we get more core mining drills. Um, let's just do power pole like this. And because the core mining drills have a minimum power consumption of zero, we really don't need a power switch. Hello, boss? What happened to my... oh. That's what happened to my bots. Okay. We're just gonna block this off if... if the accumulators get low. Say, less than 80%. Or rather, it has to be greater than 80%. There's diminishing returns, but you still get more overall than you had before by adding another one. Yes. But individually, this drill is already down to less than half of a red belt. Uh, and it's only going to get slower. I mean, when we get mining productivity, it does get faster, but um, it's never going to be like 22.5 per second. Alright, let's put an accumulator up here. Oops. And that's going to give us another 100 megawatt. Wait, I think they made the core mining drills cheaper. 25 megawatts each. That's a lot cheaper than it was. I don't know if that's SE.6 or if K2 has something to say about it. But regardless... Accumulator charge has to be greater than 80%. Now these are imbalanced. Whoops. There we go. So we might stop mining at night. I'll have to check. Oh, it's night time now. How deep into the night are we? Most of the way through it. Doesn't that mean that... Oh no, it's daytime. Dub. Our... Steam... No, it is... It, it was nighttime. Our solar panels are coming back up. That means we are using our steam turbines at nighttime. Which means accumulator charge isn't going to go down... Unless we're really, really out of power. Um, I thought I had it set up. Let's see. Power switch turns on if accumulator charge is full. Uh, if it drops below 80%, we switch off. So the steam battery is connected to the entire power network 
until accumulator charge drops below 80%, but we're consuming steam to keep the accumulator charge high. So we're just using the steam battery all the time. Which means we're not saving that much for a CME, although we do have 1.1 million steam. How could I... Because the accumulator charge is effectively a higher priority than the steam by default, how could I... Uh... Oh, I see the problem. This way, the steam battery only powers the umbrella. Well, it also powers, like, a handful of media point defenses, but we're not using those anymore. So I can just get rid of that, that's easier. Literally only turn steam on if accumulator less than 20%. Move the accumulator further away from the steam power grid. Yeah, um, I might also make it so that if accumulator charge bottoms out, we rely on steam. But unless it's a power emergency, I want the steam only for um, the umbrella. Lego fan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. T, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. I was thinking you were charging the accumulator by accident because it was too close. Uh, no, I think we've got it set so that this accumulator is only on this side of the power switch. Okay. And then... I could just have a separate power switch. Would be an easy way to do this logic here. Or, I could add another decider combinator. That might be more elegant. We simply say if... Uh, if accumulator charge gets super low, green signal. But I'm going to send that green signal directly to the power switch, ignoring the memory cell. So it's A for accumulator. Yes, it is. If A less than 10%, green signal 1. Okay, so green signal once we're fully charged. Red signal when we drop below 80%. So if it's nighttime, we don't want to keep spending power on banking steam, which does lose some efficiency. Uh, only during the day when the accumulator charges fall. For the most part. Uh, so once we drop below 80%, I could set this even higher. Let's say once we drop below 95%, um, we're going to disconnect. And we're not going to reconnect until it gets back to 100%. The exception to this rule is if we get below 10%, uh, something's wrong. Let's use our steam. I should probably put like a... Uh, I can't control click that. I, I should probably put an announcement here. If it comes to that. Programmable speaker. 
If you update SE, there will be new life support UI, indeed. I don't update by default because I don't want something to break, especially in a long playthrough on stream. Uh, speaker... I'll have to make a backup before I try it. And we'll just do the same setting. A less than 10. And I don't think we're going to get... Um... Oh, we do get a sound. Normally when I have biters, I've got the alerts... Oh! It's a separate channel from the alerts now. That's good. That's very good. Okay, um, what sound should we go with? Probably this. This is pretty representative of how we feel about being less than 10% accumulator charge. Accumulator powers muckied. Okay. Global playback, yes. Fantastic. That accumulator is never going to drop below 100, is it? Because the turbines are connected? Uh, that's what we're changing right now because there was a wire connection. Um, so, so what we've got now is a separate power network that only powers the umbrella. That's the turbines. This power network here is just to feed steam into the turbines. Um, so we've got one, two, three power networks. We just switched on the power switch and we're going to flash water to steam. Uh, and then if we get a CME, we're going to depend on that steam. It, the CME is also powered by the main network, just to, just to be sure. But more to the point, so we don't waste steam all the time. Now the switch disengaged, I guess I missed what finally got it to do that. You should put a lamp there too, because if you set a multiple alarm, you can't identify them. So easier if you... Uh, I, I've set it to include an alert. So if we get this condition met, it's going to add this down here. I can just click on it to see exactly where it is. Abuser. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Here come our bots. Poor bots. Let's hurry up and pick them up. Okay. Now, what were we doing before that? Poor mining. No path because we didn't put signals here yet. Uh, I think the rest is done there. And this one has been updated to have some power management as well. Let's get, go get those signals done first. I might just drop off this media point defense ammo though. on fishies and we just need some rail and signals what are you doing oh there's a queue gotta hurry up then It's a bit broken. Because we ran power poles through here previously. A 
I didn't bring enough rail. But this should get things moving. Or not, because we didn't actually have enough landfill for this signal previously. I did not do that very well. Uh, can we get some more stone? So we don't have to go back. Fantastic. And away we go. Beautiful. Let's grab this rail. Maybe we can finish without another trip. I just upset that train. Yeah, no, we need more. Can I handcraft? I need more stone. We've got uh, steel beams. Fantastic. Oh wow, we have so many core fragments here already. Or rather, I forgot just how small the stack size is. So this is actually doing a stack every two seconds. Uh, but more to the point, we'll now be getting not double the pyroflux, but it'll help. Where else do we have core mining drills? Over here? Or rather, uh, core seams. There's one down this way. Let's go get some rail first. Once we get to four mining drills, we will have doubled. And... About this. Oh, we're copying trees again. Um... How about... Yeah, that's the only trouble with the mod that lets you blueprint trees. Uh, you copy them when you're not really interested. Did bring accumulators, fantastic. don't have a drill though. Let's just put this here. Actually, let's put it far enough along so that the train will fit without blocking the roundabout. That's pretty much perfect. Hi, I wish I could plant trees on purpose. Wait, what? Uh, full good. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Loader and loader. I can't handcraft one of these, can I? Not right now. That's the only trouble with the Mark II mining drills. They don't upgrade into the core mining drill. I would have to carry 400 concrete anyway. I'm not doing that. Wait, what? Oh, the core drill is in the way there. Okay. Accumulator charge greater than 80. C for cat. 
Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. Mickey uh, tells. Welcome, welcome. Aren't trees the true enemy? Not really. How was your stream today? Oh, did I? Yeah, I must have connected the wire up here. Otherwise, the trains wouldn't come. I did forget to name the station, though. Four fragment provider. Lolillo, thank you very much again for the ten gifted subs. Very much appreciated, thank you. Trees aren't an enemy any more than a cow is an enemy of someone who wants a hamburger. Wow. I don't know. Uh, free pollution reduction doesn't seem like an enemy to me. Uh, so we need to go get ourselves a core mining drill. Not to mention place this rail. Just because it's Saturday, have a nice weekend. Thank you so much. You too. This stream is hippie propaganda. Uh, thank you. Oh, the tree thing. Right. Try the decor Dectorio mud. Reducing the pollution is a strike against them. If you can't scoop it with a ladle, you're not producing enough. But it brings biters and makes the water look yucky. Come to think of it, if we took more of an oxygen not included approach... Uh... Pollution would eventually make the planet so hot that your your buildings would melt. You'd end up with a Venus. It invites the neighbors over. Yes, indeed. We need some more rail. Probably not that much, to be honest. And I need a coal mining drill. And I think I will go and get this seam, these two. I'll probably... Oh, I almost forgot, we do still have biters to deal with. So I'm not going to create a bridge all the way across there. Um, yeah, for those of you who weren't here earlier on, close to the start of the stream, uh, our UPS dropped from 60 to 20-ish rather rapidly uh and it turned out it was rampant being rampant um it was probably ordering about a million biters to attack us simultaneously from all directions so not that i'm against dealing with that but in terms of rampant's impact on the ups it had to go so now we've got far fewer biters. Oh, uh, for some reason when we removed Rampant, it also removed all of the biter nests and worms on the planet. Even though for some reason there were like just a couple of biters left roaming around. So in order to not completely cheat, uh, I trimmed the surface of Nalvis after removing the uh, Rampant mod. So we no longer have the whole thing... Uh, scanned, but the biter nests will be there uh, when we expand. Or the pollution cloud is, oh, surprisingly small. That means if I make some more uh, air purifier blocks, that's weird. Uh-oh. Oh, I didn't think of that. 
we need to not saturate um, the air purifiers on this belt. So that there's room to put the recycled ones back on. Alright, is this finished? Not quite. Uh, LTN stand pickup. I just want the combinator, actually, because I already named the station. There we go. Should be a train coming any second. They are pretty free. Wait, what? What's free? You'll also have a steam engine to delete heat then. Yeah. <laughs> Although steam engines... Uh, can you imagine uh, having to go through that many steps to get steam engines in Factorio? Core mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You recycle them one to one, so you don't need to make new ones. Wait, what am I recycling? Oh right, we didn't get a train load here yet. Wait, how did we not get a train load here yet? Oh, the individual coal miners are getting slower, because I'm adding more. Okay, so what was next? Uh, I'm getting lost. What are we doing? Help. Send help. Uh, COVID brain. Early onset Alzheimer's. What's happening? What were we going to do next? I was going to get this core mining drill. Oh, and then I was talking about why we're not building a bridge over here yet, because we do still have biters. And all of the exciting things that happened leading to that. So I guess we're getting this drill next. I'm going to need a lot of landfill if I'm going to drag that rail all the way out. So let's bring all the landfill we can. Time to go to bed, Grandpa? Oh, no. Okay, landfill. And I think, at least for the moment, I'll do a little custom job. So we don't need as much landfill. Bring straight rail out like so. And just use as little as possible. Oh! I was gonna rescue that fishy. Poor fishy. Just covered in landfill. What a way to go. Uh, I need... Oh no. We can't rescue the fishies because my inventory is too full. Oh, the horror. How much space do I have here? Not enough. Not enough. Okay then. Let's just plan this with... Does it matter which landfill recipe I use to plan it with the navsat? I, I doubt it. I didn't mean to go that far. Okay, that's fine. We'll just do something like this. Now then. Let's get the bots to fill that out so that we've got room in our inventory. Don't waste fishy? Yeah, I don't want to waste fishy. This one's going to be... It, its new home is going to be a bit smaller.
that's actually all the rail I brought. Whoops. And where are we going to fit? Probably here. Extend this out a bit. Oh, rip fishy. My bad. Sorry I killed you. I didn't bring a, another drill, did I? I thought I would need more landfill, but then I decided to do it this way. Can't you make fish from rockets? Fish from rockets? There is a way to make fish. Um... Bioculture and nutrient gel. It also makes a bunch of contaminated bio sludge and cosmic water. Wait, is that it? That's the only way. I thought there would be more. Okay then. We're gonna need rail going up here. Over this way. Send one fish up, get more back. Get more back. It brings back dolphin? What? What? Rocket launch products dolphin. Isn't that just an achievement? In vanilla, if you launch a stack of space science packs into space, the stack of fish will come down. That's so weird. Look at fish usage. You can put it in a rocket. Yeah, I did. I think it's, uh... I think that's been removed. Oh, wait. That was recipes. And it has been removed, though. We need them for, or we can use them for life support and first aid. And bio sludge. Infinite fish supply for one water source. Only worlds, I guess. Dolphin what? Uh, yeah, you get a thanks for all the fish. Uh, if you send fish up with the rocket. How does this fit? Not that well. This is fine. Just do it that way. Oh, we're going to need room for signals if we want more than one train queuing in this whole area. We probably don't need it, to be honest. Should be able to fit a train here. So this would be one, two, three trains that could be sent at the same time. It's probably fine. Until we expand this way. Let's go get ourselves a drill. And lose our bots in the process, apparently. Fantastic. Oops. Okay. You can also ride a car up in vanilla by putting the car as cargo. That was added when SpaceX launched the Tesla car. Cute. Alright, um... I don't really need this land... Oh no, the bots are coming. No, 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 no. Don't take my stuff. That's, that's not actually trash, I'm using it for storage. Alright, give me some more rail and a... ...ore drill. Maybe not that much rail.
Okay. Away we go. What? There's no way we're out of rail. Yeah, the bots are being weird again. And down here. Uh, we're going to need an accumulator. Again. Splitter. Loader. That's not going to fit. Uh... Oh, there's not going to be room for the logic if I do this. Let's just do that. Okay. Are we done here? Fantastic. And connect like so. Standard pickup station. Station name. Fragment. Uh, I actually want to rename this one as well, but there's a there's a train coming for it already. It'll mess up the schedule. Okay, there shouldn't be another one coming. Copy paste onto that. Fantastic. There was one down here we got right the first time. Nice. Uh, we will need power. And we're not going to run this thing off of solar panels over here. So... I also have very little room to maneuver my inventory right now. Let's get our logic in. Accumulator charge greater than 80%. And then... That's it. Alright. Substation... Preferably right in the middle. Seems good. And where exactly would I... Uh, I'm just going to fill it. Wait, no, I don't have enough landfill. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Big lighted power pole goes here. Landfill goes here. Perfect. And then, let's get this right the first time. We're not going to have a train run us over because there's no resources here yet. Okay. Piccadilly is myself over this way to mark where our pole is. And Phil goes... Let's turn off our RoboPort. Uh, landfill goes here, right? Fantastic. That should be it. Perfect. Okay. Careful. And then blueprint, include, wait, what? Oh no, the blueprint's not going to include the landfill because it doesn't, because there are no landfill tiles because of, uh, because of nice fill. Okay, I know what to do. We're going to the editor, we're going to make water. 
and big brush. We're going to add landfill. Well, actually, first of all, let's just put some big holes. Like so. And landfill. Landfill goes here, and here. I should have done this to begin with. It would have been easier. Blueprint. Tiles. And we're done. Fantastic. Okay. There we go. And that one fits perfectly. Nice. Right, we're going to need a couple over here, and our drill is alive. Or it will be once we have a bit more accumulated charge. Press Shift plus Control C. Shift plus Control C. That's awkward. That's just giving me the calculator. I'm guessing we have a couple of mods with the same control settings. Uh, no? Calculator UI focus on input. Nice fill. There isn't a setting. Control C and the white pressing shift. The uh, while pressing shift, you can make the blueprint. Control C and shift. Whoa! Now we're doing factory search. Okay, I think we have a few too many shortcuts. Overlapping. Control C, hold shift while dragging. Uh... No, I think that's if there was actually landfill there. Control C, shift. I... What is this blue thing, though? Oh, it's to make a blueprint. Yeah, the thing is... There isn't actually landfill here. That's what Nicefill does. But today I learned that shortcut. That's different. Shift with Control C opens blueprint dialog, indeed. Okay. So we got our four fragments. No, we don't because pasting that didn't work properly. And now they're imbalanced. Close enough. Hey Mikey, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I recommend the landfill everything mod. What's the difference? Alright, so now our core drills are individually down to 9.75 per second. Uh, but we should have double what we had from the first one in total. 39 per second. Fantastic. That's two stacks, basically. And how fast can this keep up? 40 per second. That's actually almost perfect ratio. We're barely not keeping up with this block of pulverizers uh, with our core fragments. So that'll give us how much pyroflux? That's the main reason we're doing this. Eight per second. Well, it's not nothing. It's, it's technically not nothing. It's only going to take... Uh, 
1.74 hours to get a train load of Pyroflux. We did get some sent to steel, though. I'm pretty sure. What? Oh, that's not where the Pyroflux goes. Uh, it's actually iron. Didn't I crank the priority on this? It's molten iron. I did crank the priority on this. Okay, I think that should just be equal to copper, actually. I could maybe, maybe even connect the two, since this is the only place Pyroflux is going, and it's going to be slow, and we want them to both have access. Perhaps? I don't suppose... No, we're not saturated on ingots. It's going to take its sweet time. Maybe we should have some delivery cannons that deliver... Copper and iron and steel plates as opposed to ingots. Are these okay? We're looking for oil. Oh! Oh, I forgot. Wait. No, I didn't. Oh! That's interesting. Yeah, I forgot to tell those stations that no, you don't have oil here. That's the other station. Because we're doing two fluids at... We're doing one fluid at both of those pickups. But... they It just so happened to put all of the crude oil in one storage tank. Apparently I don't have pipes. Because we can't get both of those pumps working at the same time. And it prioritized uh, the two on the right, I guess. Actually a really nice mod, so easy to expand. When you're playing on mostly island. Indeed. When pasting blueprint holding shift overrides inplaceable entities but also marks trees stones cliffs for removal the feature should be that it also ghosts landfill but devs disagree I see so does the mod do that or all right well this will be good enough uh I can't believe we're already full on our raw rare metals. And that's in the... That's not just in the storage area, that's also in the output for core fragment processing. So we need to hurry up. Uh, so this is how we're going to do our voiding. We're going to take it to a storage area, which is a low priority drop off. And only when it's full... We're going to... how much is here? 16k? Only if it is precisely full. I guess this could be generic, but it's going to be different stack sizes anyway. Then and only then uh, are we going to brush... How fast can this crush? 0.5 per second. Wow, that is actually so much slower than I thought. And we're producing 16 per second? Almost? Just from coal mining? I remember thinking maybe we actually will need... Uh... Maybe we will actually need a system that can delete items faster, but damn. That is B. 
beyond my expectation. To think we would need more than a couple or a few crushes for each resource. Or at certain resources, at least. You can make landfill from rare metals instead of voiding directly. Is that so? I might have to make this the norm. Landfill... Uh, actually, we can't. Or is it a different machine? Landfill. There's 11 recipes. Scrap, stone, sand, copper. We need a recycling facility. Uh, I know we can make those. So that's going to massively increase how quickly we can void it. I didn't think the crusher would be quite so slow. Alright, let's see. Let's see how fast this gets, actually. I could use the editor, but... We've already got this stuff in motion. We may as well try. So do we have recycling facilities? We do not. Recycling facility. Make it 20. And apparently it's a lower priority than... Oh wait, we have to wait up to 30 seconds uh, for this to refresh. The only trouble with having Crafting Combinator mod itself update only every 30 seconds is we can't actually see how long it's going to be. Um, but yeah, I think we'll just handcraft some. We only need like four at the moment, right? Heat shielding. Gimme. Alright. Where's our recycling facility? Here we go. So let's see... One second? For 50? Uh, that's literally faster than the blue belt. And... Presumably... The crusher is gonna delete 0.5 landfill per second. So if we're really trying to get rid of it fast, we could just put some speed modules in the crusher. We could probably... the recycler is the same size as the crusher, right? So we could probably put recyclers uh, exactly where the crushers were and just have one crusher in the middle. Probably gonna be enough. If it's not, we could do four of them quite easily. All right, recycler, landfill. And we may as well, I don't know. I'm only going to use this landfill if I come here manually. I don't really see where I could squeeze in a train to pick up the landfill. It's a nice way to get landfill? Yeah. Uh, I'll just put a container for landfill before we crush. I think. That's actually a really nice fit. But... Where's our container gonna go? We could put a big one like this. I feel like... It's 
storehouse is probably fine. Actually, it's not going to fit elegantly this way or that way. No! Is there a middle tile to these? I think there is. Yeah. We could put this exactly in the middle. That's not exactly in the middle. Or can we? No, there's... Yeah. Uh... Oh, I think it's going to be like a spiral sort of thing. Yeah, it is. So there's no such thing as a middle as far as these... What are they? 7x7 seven seven buildings are concerned? If you store it in warehouse, you probably wouldn't remember to void it for a long time. Oh, I'm just going to set it to void when the warehouse is full. Just like we're doing with this step. How about... I don't really think a warehouse is totally necessary. I know bigger containers are supposed to be a little bit bad for UPS, but... I mean, we've got bulk rail loaders all over the place. No need to put it on a train, right? I could put it on a train. I, I would like to, actually, but where we're going to fit that train is beyond me. Unless we're going to use one of the pickups, not as a storage, but for a provider for landfill. But if we do that, we're kind of going to break the symmetry. This is not going to be totally symmetrical. But this looks good. It's also not totally symmetrical. But I kind of like it. Um, what if... What if we just do it like this? It's not perfect, but what is? And then this would look like this. I think I can handle that. Where'd our crusher go? Didn't I pick one up? I did pick up a crusher that was here. So, where is it? Huh? Actually, does the pulverizer have the same recipe? To delete things? It's probably faster, right? No, it doesn't. We can crush various things and get component parts out of it. Alright, just give me a crusher. Whatever. We'll let that be a mystery. Crusher probably fell on the ground, you're right. Item on ground? There it is. Sneaky crusher. Okay. So this has a max rate of one per second. Uh, if we do put landfill in here. It is indeed 0.5 per second. So if we really want to, we could put speed modules in here. But I would I would be surprised if this doesn't keep up with the worst our base has to offer. 
We will need some substation. Oh, that's a nice fit. That is a very, very nice fit. Alright. Let's remove those. And I think I said I need to bring four cyclers, but that was... That was just focusing on the stuff we already had. A recycler can't turn stone into landfill, can it? No. So it's going to look a bit out of place when we have to deal with... Uh, when we have to deal with stone. Can it do it with sand, actually? No. The one that deals with stone is going to look a bit lopsided. But what are you going to do? That's pretty neat. Okay. So we're actually not full right now. What's this train waiting for? Crude oil... Oh. Oh, there's like... A little tiny slither of crude oil not making its way into this train. So just like we did with setting the provide stack threshold to 51... Uh, 81 rather. I'm gonna set this fluid provide threshold to 51,000. So we don't have this problem again. And let's send you on your merry way. Actually, I just realized it might send a train to pick up from each of these when there's only 50k fluid available. So we shouldn't... We shouldn't have one fluid at both of these. So we'll just do this like we normally do. Uh, train stop output. And crude oil can go up the top, I guess. Actually, yeah, it's fine. Crude oil less than zero. Get rid of that setting. And we've got 1k crude here. Could I perhaps persuade it to go somewhere else? It still says it's got 1k. I think they're still connected somehow. Or is it looking at both sides of this pump? Yeah, it is. There's like hardly any... Alright, is that about it? 1k, 4.7. Why is this happening? Why can't we get that last 1k of crude moved over? Um, where even is this last 1k of crude oil that allegedly exists? Oh, that makes sense. So the steel pumps actually hold 500 as opposed to 400, and it counts as being in the fluid system. Sneaky.
Only provide crude on one side. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. I was just pumping this over so we don't waste it all. Okay, so how much is on this side now? 467. Found an inserter will run a single cycle triggered on a one tick pulse. Only if it's pulling from a chest. Yes, that is correct. Um, so it basically is able to pick up from a chest in one tick. But if you send it a pulse to pick up from a belt, it'll say, okay, I'm going to pick something up. And then it takes a few ticks, like five ticks or something, three to five ticks, I think. Minimum before it's going to pick something up off the belt. Uh, so by the time the hand is able to grasp something off the belt, it's no longer receiving a signal to say it's allowed to pick up something off the belt. Therefore, it just does a little twitch and doesn't work. Cool. I thought maybe... Oh, we are getting a flicker here. I was going to say, I thought maybe setting this to... So that it has to be completely full would stifle the throughput. Oh. Uh, but it looks like it's... Oh, it actually is slowing down. Alright, we'll say 15,900. Actually, I think it's still going to bottleneck. No? Oh, that's equal. Let's say greater than. Now it's going to be imbalanced. Uh, these two are going to drain faster than this can put in. No, we're going to bottleneck on the recycler. Which is good, actually. So these two should put in at the same rate. Even if they don't, uh, we have a way to rebalance it. Actually, I was just going to set this to... Raw, rare, metal. If there's less than a train load in this side. We're going to cycle it. Tanks connected on the right. Uh, give me a sec. Crude oil has arrived. That could be a problem. Uh, what was I going to set this to? 2,000. So we're only going to rebalance it if there isn't enough to fill a cargo wagon on one side. Okay. This should have this setting. And there should still be, like, just the dregs of crude oil left on this side. Yeah, this pump isn't even working now. 8.7. Let's purge that. Just deleted a little bit of crude. Whoops. Okay. So, we're gaining landfill. We'll only delete the land... What the... Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, stop. Uh, what have we got? 9,600 we can fit in here? Well, I could just set it to anything. It's true when there are no inputs. All right. Anything equal to 9,600. It's probably... I wonder if there's any UPS difference. If we make that generic or not. So we're only going to avoid it if this chest of landfill is completely full. Nice. And we're not going to need any assemblers. At least not for anything except stone. Don't even know what I'm going to put here yet. Is 
Subhan, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Can you read total amount in fluid system? Uh, no, you cannot. You can only read from certain containers and not pipes or pumps, for example. Okay. Uh, it seems to be keeping up. How fast can we void? 50 per second. I think that's more than we can make from core fragment processing. That's a lot more than we can make from core fragment processing. Although... Actually, we can only void 25 per second if we don't put speed modules here. But we're only getting 16. So that'll be fine. That'll keep our other resources coming from Core Fragment Processing. Nice. Alright, let's do the same here. Copper, iron. Uh, we do want... This is going to be 4800. We do want some logic. so that we don't waste landfill. And then later game I could make these like passive providers and put some roboports here so when spidertrons come by or even if I come by. Oh, I could do this right now actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, when the spidertrons come by um, they'll pick up landfill. I think you can make all the landfill chests into 2x2. Two two. Uh, we can, but it's going to be a little awkward here. We'd have to do, like, a loader with a corner. And I'm just not that worried about wasting landfill if we've already got a ton of it. And the whole point of this place is storage and voiding if necessary. I don't know. I might revisit this and see if I can't figure out a way to put the landfill on a train. Um, I guess I could always... Why is there a signal here? Oh, because I was going to do that earlier. Uh, I guess I could always just use one of the bits of straight rail that are up here. It might be hard to fit it somewhere. I'd have to get rid of... Maybe that's not so bad. Just swap out one wind turbine. And we could put landfill pickup here, question mark. And we fit... That is a tight squeeze. But that will do. And we're not going to normally let trains stop here. You can move the crushers counterclockwise by one to fit the two by twos. Counterclockwise by one. Oh, like this? Wait, wait, wait. I think I did something derpy there. So... Like so. Uh, where am I going? Here. Let's get rid of those. Probably just gonna have to move that one. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Good job. Is it like this? 
Fantastic. Oh, that looks incredibly neat. Thanks, I love it. Um, and we'll take landfill from these containers and put them into... Uh, make them accessible by train as well. We can't send landfill by delivery cannon, can we? Don't think. Uh, do any of these not have something so I can swap the recipe? Here we go. Sadly, we cannot send landfill every cannon, which is a bit surprising, really. I guess it would be really massive. Okay, so let's say we go... Hmm. Easiest way would be to go through the containers. Or I could do a splitter. That might be a bit more sensible. Can we do that here? Not really? It's gonna look something like this. But where is this one gonna... Maybe we don't need a splitter. Maybe something like this is fine. Actually. Because the max rate of this is one per second. Don't really need a loader. Just do it like so. Mm, this one is going to need something like this. And output's going to go over here. We're going to want to mirror that. And how far does this reach? Not quite that far. Let's put our... Could you move? Thank you. Let's put our splitter about here. Loader. Loader. Underground. All the way up here. And I was going to say, I guess we don't need more crushes if we're bringing them all to a common spot, but the crushes are super slow, so we'll leave it like that. I thought it was a palm tree. Sushi the landfill. Alright. We have, weirdly enough, landfill in the rail network. Which I'm sure we'll take advantage of eventually. Uh, we also need more power here. gonna look a bit messy. That seems okay. I'm surprised how much time I've spent on this, but at the same time, uh, it is kind of a complex system. And now we've got something that really works well. 
and we can store up an insane amount of landfill from our excess resources before we crush any. Yeah, we do end up just getting the same behavior here once it equalizes at a certain point, so this may as well say has to be completely full. Maybe I could... no. If I had a belt that was exactly 25 per second, uh, I would definitely use that here. Twenty two point five is half a blue belt. Raw rare metals more like common rare metals indeed. Could just priority splitter into the bulk loaders. Priority splitter into the bulk loaders? Well, we effectively are doing that. I like this layout anyway. Uh, I just need two more recycling facilities. We have concrete up here, right? There's stone brick. Uh, I thought we had concrete in the rail network. I could have sworn we had concrete in the rail network. I would love to use LTN Manager right now, but it crashes. Because of the editor extensions uh, lab. I believe. Alright, no concrete today, feels bad. There's our rare metals. And... Zero concrete. Alright, let's go get some. How do you not casually mine just for voiding? Uh, do you mean how do I not void the finite resources? The finite resources are not brought to the storage area. Simple as that. And the storage area is the voiding area. Maybe you forgot to put concrete icon? Uh, I think I looked at all of the blocks. That we've got already. Oh, what's this? Oh! Got him. Good catch, thank you. Oh, good call. Yeah, we've got obscene amounts of concrete. Yeah, because I thought I remembered seeing concrete here. Which I did. Okay then. Uh, I forgot. That's what I was trying to remember earlier. I need to fix the pollution filters. Uh, but before I do, let's grab... Do I not have a request for concrete? I do have a request for concrete. Do we, do we not have it in... In the network? What? Concrete. We have zero stone brick. Uh oh. Uh oh. We ran out of stone for the main bus base. Okay. Time to cobble together a stone drop off. Can we fit one here? Just like we did with copper and fuel pickup, perhaps. 
I'm sure we can. The signaling's going to be a bit ugly. But we're going to pretend it's fine. Could, could I not get rid of these signals? And... What? Oh, there we go. That fits easily enough. Uh, we actually need a loader, not an unloader. And signals. That fits easily, actually. Are trains stuck in a queue going for that offshore coal mine? Uh, not really stuck. Oh. Why don't you have a path? Oh. Because I put this curved rail slightly too far back. Yes, indeed. Alright, uh, let's fix stone first. We're going to need a requester. Bulk rail loader. No, we should have an unloader. And connect like so. We're looking for a couple of train loads of stone. So 16k. Wait, that's four train loads. Stone requester. I noticed that... Wait, what? When this station was called just Requester. It showed us some trains. Where is it going to? The core... The core fragment Requester is just called Requester. Let's switch that off for a second. Until the trains are done. Okay. And then we just need to feed stone... Uh, down to here? I guess. It's gonna be a bit of a pain. Why don't we just... Wait, this is sand? Oh, right, I see. Why don't we just do that? Should be more than enough. Always has been. We'll do double blue belts, perhaps. Uh, this goes down here. And... That can go all the way back here. Wait, what? Easiest spaghetti of my life. Why is there no sand? Oh, because there's no stone. Alright, so... Two belts. Let's just do it like... Like that. One, two, three, four. And I think we're good. Alright, so... 
requesting stone. Spaghetti, indeed. Train is coming. It's got a little ways to go. Uh, so I'll just try and visually double check this instead of waiting for the stone. It looks like it'll be fine. Alright, next on our to-do list is core fragment. Uh, pick up station fix. And then the air filters. I might be able to simply move this back is what I would say if we didn't have 640 stacks to move. So instead, um, I'm not going to be able to move this back, am I? Not without landfill, and I don't have landfill. Are you joking? I was just dealing with so much landfill a second ago. Let's go pick it up from the recycling area. Uh, and I think I'll just set this to landfill less than one cargo wagon. Wait, what? Oh. Give to me some landfill. Come to think of it, if the provide stack threshold is 80, as in two wagons, and we simply push landfill from loader number two into loader number one, uh, but only when there's less than one cargo wagon here, then we probably only need to push this one way to balance it, unless the player comes along and steals from this side when it's really full, but I don't really think I need to worry about that. So we probably only need one, uh, one set of loader, belt loader, whenever we want to rebalance these things, just in the direction of the bulk rail loader that's closest to the train stop. Which means I could have had uh, pipes going like so. Maybe I'll redesign a little bit off stream, but for now I want to be a bit more productive. Let's see. Rail. This way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Bad, bad. Guess placing rail makes them reevaluate the signals. Oh, it turned this signal off. Okay. okay. Uh, we're gonna need a little bit more landfill. Bad train, <laughs> indeed, <laughs> damsel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And that should be it. Okay, you are full, which means you want to go to the drop-off. You are wanting to go here. And that should all work now. How's it going, friendo? Pretty good, thanks. Quite well, actually. It's taking longer than I thought to go back to Hagen. But I'm really liking some of the systems that I've built today. Uh, we got... I, I decided to build some storage because... Core mining. And... Uh, I actually integrated it so that the storage is the voiding area. Um, basically, when this is full... Like, okay, so the drop-off... The drop-off is a low-priority drop-off. Um, 
we're gonna it is gonna be the lowest priority drop off. And if and only if the storage is full, um, it, it's also a higher priority to pick up from storage. If this ends up completely full, then and only then we're gonna put stuff straight into the recycler for landfill. And only if we end up completely full on landfill, we're going to start crushing uh, the landfill. That's fantastic, thank you. How many Arcospheres would you feed to Bite a Friendo? Uh, one of each type. In fact, I, I will pledge to do that. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we've basically got storage and, uh, getting rid of excess resources in the same place. So we don't need logistics, like we don't need another set of train stops or anything like that. Uh, to say we've got too much of something, take it somewhere specific to get rid of it. And the stuff that's queuing up to be destroyed is always available. Uh, very easily to the rest of the rail network. Where is Frendo? Frendo is in the middle of our old main bus base. I hope. Oh, there he is. I was beginning to get scared that somehow removing Rampant would have deleted Frendo. But he's right here. He, he actually got pushed all the way to the end of the main bus eventually. <laughs> Keep him safe, indeed. What's the point of Frendo besides defense? He's a Frendo. Is that what you ask about your friends? Oh, we need another power pole here. Right, there we go. Fantastic. How is the accumulator charge losing power? I guess it just lasted like a second. Oh, wait. I guess the accumulator lasts like a second just feeding the drill. And yeah, there's, there's room for... There's a little bit of room for core fragments here before the decision making part. So it'll probably get all the way down to zero. That makes sense. Sugan, so welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Just checking, Rampant is gone now. Yes. Uh, so pretty close to the start of this stream. Uh, bigger boss than Dems. Wow, Veldak. My clat will be happy. Oh no. Curious whether there were other mechanics I didn't know about. Uh, about which, sorry? Uh, yeah, before I forget to answer the rampant question, um, basically, probably like half an hour into the stream, maybe 20 minutes, uh, the UPS dropped from like 60, I mean exactly 60, to 20 ish. Uh, and it happened very, very quickly. About Frendo, okay, yeah. Uh, and it turns out... Rampant was probably pathing like 6 million biters to us at the same time. Uh, or something. So... Or, or it just maybe hit a critical mass of having way too many... Um, way too many regen biters bumping up against each other. Just sitting around their nests. Whatever the case, uh, we hit a point where over the course of like less than a minute or two, our UPS went down, 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 down to like 20. Um, I felt it at first and thought, I wonder what that is. Well, it'll probably pass. And then next thing I knew, we could barely move. Ignoring issue of core mining and then voiding everything mined? 
I'm not voiding everything mined. We're making landfill. Uh, I need a couple of recyclers. I think I, I think I'm just handcrafting those, right? Where's our concrete? Why do I not have concrete? Oh, right, because we ran out of stone. How's our concrete looking now? It still hasn't received any stone. Uh oh. That could take a little while. Uh, let's grab stone brick from here. And feed it to our concrete machine. And... SF Hobbit, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How is your stream? If you stop everything, you will just void and vent things from core mining instead of stopping it. Yes. Turtle of Jackets, welcome, welcome. Okay, that, that concrete... Oh, we've got it on the belt. Oh, thank goodness. I forgot about this. I forgot we bust concrete. We've actually got way more than I thought we had. Now then, uh, I needed like, what, two recycling facilities? Three. And then our storage area will be complete. And we've actually got... Uh, one, two, three, four solids, and one, two, three, four, five fluids uh, that we haven't stored yet in this block. I need some room. There we go. Next, we're going to fit, uh, fix the pollution. Which is to say, we're going to fix the flawed sushi belt for pollution filters. Uh, what resource is this supposed to be? Uranium. Oh, we can't landfill uranium. So... I really need to do uranium processing. But we have no cover X. Wait, why is this? Oh, because it's like a hundred priority to get rid of it. That makes sense. Um... What if I did some uranium processing here? No, that wouldn't work so well. Did you fix names of the coal mining station? Oh yes, thank you. Uh, these have not been in motion for a minute. We do, we are able to consume core fragments slightly faster than we're able to produce them. So, in the long run, that shouldn't matter that I left it idle. Oh, never mind. Never mind. The stack size is so small that this is already full. Wow. We did waste some... some productivity there. Okay. Uh, so we got this done. I'm just... Uh, I want to say I don't, I'm not going to worry about uranium at the moment. But... Okay, this is all of the uranium that we've accumulated from core fragment processing. So it's not going that fast. But still. I need to do a processing block for uranium, even though we don't have cover eggs, and that makes me sad. Oh, let me put this landfill away for the moment. Uh, 
Is nuclear power useless at this scale? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. I don't think I've done nuclear power yet. But it's not for any particular reason. I should probably... I should definitely get some nuclear power stuff together to take to Hagen. How's our auto crafter looking? We need more concrete. That's going to be a problem uh, for the nuclear stuff. Nuclear... Nuclear locomotive. Beautiful. What is this stack to? I can't see it from here. Oh, stack size 1. That's kind of big. Wait, seriously? Stack size 1? Were nuclear reactors always stack size 1? I feel like they used to be 20 or 10. That is rough. At least we're not going to lose any in the cargo rocket. Uh, we also will be needing heat pipe. And we've already got steam turbines. Uh, quite a lot of them. TBH. We're going to make even more. And we need heat exchanges. Say 200. The stack size 10 as of three weeks ago, unless the latest patch changed it or a mod did. Stack size 1. Damn. Okay, uh, what was I doing? Pollution filters. We actually haven't been cleaning pollution as fast as we could be for a while now. Because I didn't anticipate this half of the belt being completely full. I'm just going to set this to read belt contents hold and... Uh, what is it called? Pollution filter? Oh. Wait, why can't I put this here? Oh, because... Wait, what? What even happened just now? Is there an item on the ground? There is not an item on the ground. How did it find room? Maybe one of these picked it up. Uh, anyway, if pollution filter is not detected here, we can put some pollution filters, add them to the belt. Uh, is that going to be enough? I wonder. Well, first of all, let's create a gap. I'm sure there's a gap somewhere, but... Why don't I just pick these up for the moment? Put these straight in here. Um, get them out of my inventory, please. Thank you. We could maybe speed this thing up. I think we already rate calculated it, though. It should be more than enough, but it's got a lot of catching up to do. Don't forget to fix that P... Oh, right. Um... Yeah, so the gap in the clean filters is making its way around the sushi belt. Is it going to be enough to just say this has to lack any filters before we put more on? I would imagine so. That should leave plenty of gap. When this comes around next time, we're going to, like, double it, but that should be okay, right? Uh, 
I should make another pollution cleaning half block. Where should I put it? I could put it in basically the same place. If our pollution sink is in the middle of the pollution cloud, it's going to be doing the most work. Oh, we've got dirty water here, which means we wouldn't have to send it to the rail network. Let's do that. And get rid of that one as well. Don't really need the trees. And that should be about everything. Oh, there's something here. Wait, why is there copper here? Oh, I forgot. Okay, no, that's not going to fit here. That's okay. Uh, how about we put it here then? Because we we're, we're not doing that because the rare metal mine is still in the way. Okay then. How about up here? I do have a blueprint for this, but we haven't updated it since the fix. Alright, let's go build that. And... We're already outputting dirty water here. I could just pump it over. So we have one less... Train station? Why does that go down that way? Or... Oh, for water. Oh, how much water does does this need? Uh, practically zero, I think. 3.75 per second. So we're just dropping off water here, but we happened to have it already. I probably didn't have a fluid wagon when I built this. So this is polluted... Uh, is dirty water? Okay then. Uh, whatever. This is fine. Let's just go grab ourselves 108 air purifiers. I also need some yellow belt. I did say I was past yellow belt, but it makes a lot of sense here. Do we have the air purifiers? Yes, we do. Fantastic. Alright, you know what? We can stop handcrafting. We'll just go pick up yellow. How much do we need? 300, 11, and there's actually no splitters or undergrounds. Just tested base game nuclear reactor size is 10, must be a mod. Yeah, 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 I, I did think vanilla was 10. I thought it, I think it was 10 last playthrough as well with 0.5 and no K2 for space exploration. Uh, so we need three stacks of yellow belt and precisely 11 loaders. I'll just bring a stack. Was there anything else? Oh yeah, the uh, air filters. 150, that's more than enough. And 
where are we going? Here it is. Here comes our steel plate. So I'm hoping I can actually just keep the pollution cloud small enough that with vanilla biter rules we're simply not going to get attacked anymore. Uh, because I did turn biter expansion off because we're dealing with, or we were dealing with, uh, rampant biters. We also need more yellow inserters. That's not going to be handcrafted. Let's go get them. What are my bots doing? Fantastic. How many do I need? I feel like I need more jetpack. I don't have access to blue jetpack anytime soon, do I? Oh, definitely not. Okay. Alright, so... We require... 63 yellow inserters. Sixty-three. Back we go. Fantastic. Okay, and I will do... Oh wait, does this reach? Uh, yeah it does. Uh, I will do one fewer train stop for dirty water. One off? Really? No! Fine, we'll put it here. We can put a pump. And pretend we wanted to do that all along. Do we have any filters yet? Yes, we do. Fantastic. I think I'll go ahead and steal filters from the first one. It's going to help both blocks in a lot of ways, since we'll have room for the recycler to output them, uh, and we'll also have plenty of filters for the second block to get started. It looks like the pump plus pipe is still misaligned, it's possible. Give me, give me those filters. All of them. No, don't make me pick up the used ones. Oh no. Get out of my inventory. Alright. Gimme, gimme, gimme. This'll help. And where are we going? Up here? Let's just do... I was going to say even distribution, but... It's going to be a bit tricky. It's not that tricky, actually. Oh, too slow. Close enough. That'll be... a good start. Okay. I guess I could put the... I could spread the... the load of dealing with the polluted filters around as well. But it's gonna be a bit troublesome to 
do without adding a container. I would prefer not to add a container. But I would also prefer not to stand still holding X to drop literally hundreds of these things. Oh, we could do this, I guess. That works. Alright. Add some more filters. And most of them should be running now. Fantastic. Okay. Well, that's doubled our... Well, it's more than doubled because it fixed our pollution sink. It's going to be a little minute before all of these are running again as well. We've actually got so many used pollution filters. 50 per machine, approximately, is what we got to. So what? About... 500? Wait, no. Uh, 5,000 up. And we go through 0 0.075 used pollution filters per second. Uh-oh. So we're looking at approximately the heat death of the universe before this completely sorts itself out. Uh, or about 19 hours. 18 or 19. Okay. How about one more block? To deal with the pollution. Maybe not right next to this one. Do it at plastic. Uh, so where did my little temporary blueprint go? Here it is. Oh, and that included that red belt. That's how that happened. Alright, so we're going to need yellow belt. Uh, did we get water? Down here? Yes, we did. We're going to need yellow belt, probably a bunch of extra yellow inserters, and a bunch of air purifiers. I'll send owls? What is going on here? Okay, yellow belt. We needed three stacks last time, right? Let's just pick up four. And some loaders, and what else was there? Filters. Probably don't have room for all the filters we need now. What a mess. Do we not have any filters? We do, we've got... 32, that's it. Um, I think it's going to be a minute before we're making filters again, though. Unless we handcraft. Uh, purifier. That's what it's called. Multi-cylinder engine plastic. Okay. Plastic. Is... Where is plastic in this old base? Here it is. And multi-cylinders are over here somewhere. I 
cylinders. Oh, that's with the pollution cloud turned off. Did I did I not main bus the multi-cylinder engines? I'm a little surprised by that, but I guess if we look at it, we're going to find out. Why can't I find multi-cylinder engines? There we go. We're probably going to find out it only goes into some low throughput stuff. Yeah. We do have it automated somehow. It's not just... We're not doing it here, surely. Oh, there, there they are. We got there eventually. Okay. Um, what was I making? Purifiers. Only ten. We need more plastic. Purification. 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 And we're out of steel beams. I remember those. And now what? Plastic again? Is this enough? Let's find out. Does Hagen have water? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. The West do? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We'll see how many... how many more we need after this. It's actually going to be close. Maybe 10? 15? 21. Slightly off. So, two and a bit stacks of plastic. Hagen Dazaz ice cream. Dazaz? Okay. Uh, five. We need advanced circuits. We're standing on them. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Fantastic. That's way too much crafting. Uh, stop, 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 stop. Give me multi sil Give me inventory space. Holy. Why do I have fish? Okay. And up we go. I forgot to get more yellow inserters as well, but the bots probably gave me enough. Hopefully. Nope. How many more do we need? Uh, four. That's good, because they craft kind of slowly. Why are the bots not delivering this? Oh no, we've got bots drifting somewhere. That's a much easier to, uh, way to see how many of these are working. All of them. Fantastic. Oh, that's good. That happened sooner than expected. Wait. Oh, it's, it shows this as if it's working even though it's blocked. Never mind. But all of these ones are working. That's good.
we got all the filters, we just need yellow inserters. And we need 30 of them. Less than a stack to go. So I'm hoping uh, three of these air purifying half blocks is going to be enough to keep the pollution at bay so that the biters never attack while we go to Hagen. I guess I could always make more. What else was I coming back for? Yellow inserters. Oh, it's later than I thought it was. Uh, I might have my next break in a minute. Do some more words on stream. What are we up to? Level 9? Fantastic. And I should probably steal some filters from this one again, which, weirdly enough, will help it. Confirmed Veldak is in the chat, as if we didn't know. Okay. Actually, I guess if I bring the uh, used pollution filters here, we're, we're sort of producing regular filters twice as fast. Nice. Didn't have to... Didn't have to make any temporary boxes or anything. Cool. How's our cloud looking? We've got three holes that the pollution is draining out of. Close to the middle of it now. Fantastic. Alright. Uh, that's probably a good time. To start the words on stream. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Nicely done. Okay, let's continue, shall we? I might do some extra Factorio this week. Um, I'm really feeling... I mean... For a seven hour stream to go by and feel like a short time, you know you're having some fun. What's a fit fit five? Feed bay? Good question. Okay. Um, how's our pollution? Sinking. It's gonna take quite a while before we really see a difference. Um, but the point is that it will probably not reach the biters where we cleared them out to. Oh, I guess um since we trimmed surface, we are going to have some biters where we did clear them out earlier. But hopefully the pollution cloud won't reach them. Ho hopefully. Alright, uh, what should we do next? I could do a longer stream today. I'd love to go to Hagen before we finish. Um, there's a lot of stuff to cross off the shopping list before we physically go back to Hagen. But we've got iron ingots, copper ingots, steel ingots. Actually, there's not a single steel ingot. Hmm. Did we never... Did we never export iron, molten iron, to make steel ingots? That's probably what happened. I did sort of decide that I wanted to effectively prioritize iron ingots, but with how it is with our slow, uh, what is it called, pyroflux? It's literally going to have to be completely saturated before we make a single steel ingot. Uh, that's a lot. We've already got like... Like 8k... 7.5k iron ingots here. So it's pretty much just... This needs to be filled up before we make steel. But that said, um, I think I should have put a priority system here. Tis a flute. Well, there you go. This is our steel. And this is our iron. So we want to export... Um, hmm... I could, I could forbid iron ingots from making it all the way over here if we don't have quite enough molten iron to fill a train. Might be one way to go about it. And I can almost, but not quite, pull that off without adding any... any substations or anything. Maybe if I move these in a little bit. Let's get this tree out of here. Now I can't remember how close they were. I think they were both here. One, two, three, four. I could connect that directly, of course. Wait, those were already connected. I didn't have to do this. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so if molten iron... Uh, ...is less than 50k, it means there's not enough to trigger a train delivery. Therefore... We will not let the iron through. I don't care too much about letting the ingots uh, back up here. 
in the meantime. Otherwise, well, I mean, it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but I could put the decision making all the way up to the inserters. If I was going to go before that, I would have to have pumps limiting flow all the way back here, which I don't want to bother with. Uh, so, we will get Pyroplux delivered over here. Eventually. I think I'll force a delivery. So, we'll make this high priority. But higher than the other one, anyway. And we'll drop the provides uh, provide threshold down to 40k, just until the train is scheduled. I don't think we need to change the request threshold. Yep, there it is. And I'll just double check. This train is taking Pyroflux to Iron. Fantastic. How much Pyroflux does it take to make this molten metal? It is 1 to 75. So 40k. Uh, that is actually 300,000 molten iron. That's a lot better than I was expecting. Um, that, that can fill this one and a half times. So yeah, we really, really should have a prioritization system here. Because I feel like we should have made some steel by now. But we can consume molten iron as fast as it is produced. Turns out the ridiculous light in the bedroom this house came with does just do all colors. Wait, what? It's a disco ball? With a Bluetooth speaker? Your voice is coming from the ceiling. Indeed. Marsh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. There's our molten iron. And we're going to make some ingots, but they're going to stop here. And we're going to actually gain some molten iron to go to... Uh, to go to steel. Fantastic. Okay, so, back to our checklist. We have iron and copper ingots. We will have steel ingots. Uh, rare metals. Heat shield LDS. Stone brick concrete. Coal and, I guess, uranium. It really is about time I made a block for processing uranium. Let's do it here, I guess. Actually, uh, we may as well design it in the editor. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Apparently it has to have a think about that. And the rest of these... Okay. So we're doing uranium processing without cover X. It does not feel good. But we gotta do what we gotta do. Uh, let's see. Uranium processing. Wait, what? Oh, it's this one. We get iron and stone out of it? 
That's a little weird. We get a bit of stone out of cover X as well. I guess we were going to do this anyway. I don't know. If I had cover X, would I do both in the same block? Possibly. But regardless, we don't have the luxury of choosing right now. Um, I don't know if I've queued up... What is it called? Centrifuge? To be made at the Auto Crafter? Stacks to 50. Yes, it does. Is it going to be a higher priority implicitly than the nuclear reactor? Do you not have nuclear power yet? I do have it. I just haven't. I mean, I've got the technology. I just haven't bothered with it. So within 30 seconds, we should see that recipe change, unless nuclear reactor is a higher priority. It might be. Uh, I might have to switch off that combi for a second. Did you move the base off Nalvis fully yet? No, we're preparing to do that. Oops. And switch that off. Do we have everything we need? Probably. Concrete, heat shield, heat... Uh, steel, processing unit, big electric. It's actually not that difficult at this point. Um, but yeah. We should have those queued up next. Whenever you're ready. Filters? Fine. Whatever. Uh, let's get to designing this. And we need some huge chance. Uh, uranium processing. It's really quite simple. Um, I don't know if it's going to be sense making to use an entire block for this, but we need. One physical in, four physical out. Maybe the standard layout is not going to be that good. How slow is it going to be? Let's say we had 50 of these. That's a bit more than a red belt of uranium ore, while we don't have modules. How much uranium are we getting? 0.64 per second. Gosh. Maybe I should just do a really tiny build for this for the moment. Um, I don't really see myself bothering to go to the trouble of making a uranium mine here. At least not in the near future. Especially when the nearest one is all the way over here. So, what was our rate of uranium? 0 0.64 per second. If we can beat that... Uh, uh, we can beat that with one centrifuge. You know what? I'm tempted to just... put a centrifuge here and belt it to one of the other pairs of stations. It's going to make a lot of sense for where we're up to. Also, we're never going to put uranium that comes from a mine into this block. It's only going to be from or fragment processing. So it actually sort of makes a ton of sense. 
All right, let's handcraft ourselves a centrifuge. I need concrete and heat shielding. Where's the concrete? There we go. We'll even go all out and have two of them. Uh, but... There was also stone and iron. I could put iron in here. Stone is a little bit more of a problem. I could just not bother with the stone output. Send it straight to the... Indirectly to the crusher because we need to turn it into landfill first. Okay, it's going to be a little bit tacky, but considering that literally one centrifuge will eventually clean out all of our uranium, uh, I think this is really the way to go, as opposed to making another rail block for it. Long arm inserters. Perfect. So just to check. It's incredibly slow for everything. A single long arm should be more than enough. Uh stone is gonna get turned into landfill. our first filter. I don't think we need like a chest for it or anything. You know what? Better safe than sorry. Stone on the left. And what else was there? Uh, 235, 238, and iron ore. So we'll put iron ore over here. It's actually slightly awkward. I kind of don't want to disrupt the blueprint. So we could do it like this. And then... Iron ore to the right. Uh, where should I put... 35 and 238. How about over here? There isn't really a comfy spot to do this. I could put them both in here and filter it just like we usually do. really do want to put this here though. If I'm going to do that once, to, I'll make this tidier. Oh, there's something here. There we go. Splitter. This is U-235 and 238. And we'll have... Whoops. Uh, we'll have the train stop filter them. Two 
I don't know that I'm ever going to have a train drop this off here, but that's okay. Maybe I would, actually. Well, we'd be fundamentally changing how this thing works. We need a lot more core mining before we're like... Well, I mean, when we get uranium core mining from another planet, no, that's not going to happen because... We're not going to make our main base now, Vers. We're going to be bringing that back here, the Hagen. All right, then. Uh, so I forgot how these work precisely. We need to say which resource is not available at which train stop. How do I not have a combinator? Oh, never mind. So this just has a negative a million for 235. Because there's no 235 down here, and vice versa. This should be 238. Oh, rather, yeah, that is 238. I think that's basically it. Um, and we'll make a little exception here, since we don't have anywhere else for this uranium ore to go for now, we're just not going to wait until it's full. Two whole centrifuges? You're mad, right? At this rate, it's only going to take hours to... Empty all the uranium-235. No, sorry, raw uranium that we have. 1.33 per second, and we've got... Uh, what? 1160? Uh, 11,600. It's only going to take... 2.4 hours to drain all of our uranium. That's just blindingly fast. Completely unnecessary. I do want to double check and see this stuff working though, if I can. Plus whatever uranium you get in the meantime, yeah. I mean, if I did have just one, it would barely be faster than the rate that we're getting uranium from core fragments. So I don't think this is that overkill. Okay. Uh, so that's how uranium processing. Theoretically, we will eventually get uranium delivered to Hagen. But we really do need a proper uranium mine if we're going to run off of nuclear power over there. But looking at where the uranium is, I think it would be easier just to get uranium from Hagen itself. Yeah. So really this is just here as a sink. Um, for the spare uranium fr core fragments. Okay, so what are we doing next? Are we finally at the point where it's time to do shopping list? Just put things together to take to Hagen? Uh, looks like we're making some centrifuges now that we don't really need them. Let's switch this back on. I 
Okay. So what do we want to send to Hagen this time? It's very different from our first trip, because we've got some infrastructure there. And we've got delivery cannons that are going to be, be able to send us resources consistently to speed things up. We've got an iron mine, stone mine, copper mine. Uh, we've got oil. We don't have a lot of... Uh, we don't have advanced stuff automated. So volume of basic resources doesn't really help us at all on Hagen right now. Uh, it's the stuff that takes a lot of steps to make that we really want to send over there this time. So nuclear reactors. Very much so. Let's make a list. Reactor... Wait, do I have any chests? Uh, no. I forgot. I foolishly left all of the requester chests that we can't make yet over at Hagen, so I can't automatically get the bots to supply these things. Uh, nuclear reactor, heat shield... heat shield? Well, maybe. Uh, heat pipe, heat exchanger, steam turbines? We've got steam turbines. Do we have any... We did not make any nuclear reactors yet. What do we need for nuclear reactors? Uh, stuff that's not that difficult, actually. Oh, we need heat pipe. Oh! Since when? That's new. We need heat pipe to make nuclear reactors, which means this thing's stalemated. Uh, stalemated? You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's stuck trying to make its first nuclear reactor. So we're going to have to add a rule to that. Because the default priority order just doesn't work out for it. Um, alright, so... If... Heat pipe is less than 50. Do not try to make nuclear reactor. And we need negative a million. So that's definitely going to push that value below zero. So we're just doing from a constant combinator uh, a certain constant for outputting input count instead of one. So we don't need like to output one and then multiply it by something. All right, so once that updates, it should stop trying to make nuclear reactor and heat pipe should be next. Uh, it seems to follow mostly the ordering of left to right and logistics tab, production tab, resources tab, and so on. So, like, when we make furnaces, this is a prerequisite for this is a prerequisite for this in space exploration. Uh, and that just happens to work out in our favor for the priorities for the autocrafter. But sometimes we do have to add rules. Smokin, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Dwarf Chosen, thank you for the follow also. There's our heat pipe. Fantastic. Do we have quartz? By the way, you could use recipe combinator output to make a list of things to not make. To not make. Oh, as in... The recipe combinator that we're using to figure out what inputs we need. Or another one of those, rather. Find products. Hmm. 
pieces, recipes. I'll have to have a longer look at that. It's going to be a very time-consuming process to try and come up with that. Do we have quartz uh, being put into the rail, not rail network, the robo network here? It was quartz, right? Quartz. Where are we making quartz? Here it is. Quartz just goes straight into silicon. And I don't think there's any other consumer for it until now. Alright, let's do a filter insert or somewhere. This will do. And a red chest. Quartz goes here. And that should be fine. We're going to need an awful lot of heat shielding. That poor little insert is not going to be able to keep up. Actually, maybe it is. How fast would this consume? 27 per second. Okay, never mind. I'll take some over there myself to get it started. That's only two seconds worth. Can you make a chest that automatically packs and shoots stuff you put in to Hagen? Yes, we've done that. Um, but I haven't got the uh, delivery cannon chests at Hagen yet. So that's why they're not firing. So that's what these delivery cannons are going to be doing. When they receive uh, like a signal for heat shielding, for example, uh, they're going to put in a delivery cannon capsule and this is going to launch to Hagen. How fast is this? 17 per second, and it holds like a stack for output, so we should be empty soon. That'll be a little bit of a head start for the heat shielding. It's going to be rather slow though. Like Recipe Combinator for mixed stuff. Oh, sure. You can use the Recipe Combinator to change the recipe on the delivery cannon. If that's what you mean. Still got a few stacks. Alright, that's pretty much caught up. So we'll get a little bit of heat pipe. Once we have 50, which we already do actually, it should switch over to the nuclear reactor uh, recipe right now. Uh, or it would have already if I'd remembered this wire connection. So within 30 seconds, we'll be starting on our first nuclear reactor. There it is. Can I help it? That's a lot of concrete. Here it comes. Alright, so we definitely want to take nuclear reactors. Um, I haven't actually redesigned a nuclear reactor with K2SE. Is it going to be a familiar ratio, or...? Is our blueprint going to need an update? Well, 
we'll start with just a quote unquote small reactor. You could remotely request anything you got from Nalvis. Uh, the delivery cannons can only send some pretty basic things for the most part. The most complicated stuff they can send is heat shielding and LDS, but the rest of it is like iron ore, iron plate, iron ingots, um, that kind of thing. Crestorio 2 modifies the reactors? Alright, let's see. Does rate calculator tell us what we need to know? Steam is going to be net rate positive 2k. Seriously? What? Uh, what? 250 per second. A heat exchanger can feed five steam turbines? Whoops. Uh, wow. Okay. That, that's, that's going to change our design a lot. Keep in mind the reactor has an adjacency bonus, yes. Um, plus 50% neighbor bonus. It's a lot less of a adjacency bonus than it is in regular Factorio, or the last version of SE I played. It puts out more power though. 250 megawatt. Is... Is my memory wrong? Or do we normally just get 40 megawatts from a nuclear reactor? Is, is this actually 6.25 times more powerful? Two by two in vanilla is about four eighty watts, uh, and this is three seventy five times four. Fifteen hundred watts. It's it's more than four times as powerful. Wow. Okay. Uh, I I'm not complaining then that the reactors are a little bit more difficult to make. They're really quite cheap for what they do. Wow. Alright. Uh, how about... You know, I could say how about last thing we do today, we build a nuclear reactor. But that could be an entire process. Uh, although, considering how few heat pipes we're going to need compared to normal, I think it's actually going to be way easier than it usually is. Uh, so this consumes how much? 50 megawatt. 375. Uh, my brain no math good right now. 7.5. Okay, so we're only going to need 8. Uh, if we were following that pattern, it'd look something like this, but we would need 40... 40 steam turbines for each quarter. It's going to be fun figuring out how I'm going to fit that. But so, so little heat pipe. Look at this. That That's, that's about all the heat pipe we're going to need to feed 40 steam turbines. That's madness. So, I think... Dare I say... We probably don't have to produce a uh, heat pipe in the same ratio that we used to, and same goes for exchanges. In fact, one stack of heat exchanges is probably going to be overkill. 8, 16, 32, yeah. 32 heat exchanges is more than enough. Um, to suck up all of the heat from four reactors. If we want to have the heat oversupply, no, we don't want to do that. It'll get wasted. 
You could make a 1D heat pipe. 1D. One direction? As in... Yeah, it's probably going to be a lot easier if I do it like this. That That is probably the direction I'll go. Oh, wait. We need four of these. So something... Something along these lines. And that gives us exactly the room we need for a RoboPort. Easier on steam turbine placement too. Yeah. It, it's going to be so much easier. That's 40. Yeah, this is... This is pretty much going to be our nuclear reactor. It's not even... It's not even a challenge. Probably going to have to pump a lot of water in. 2,000 per quarter. That's not that bad. Although... We're definitely going to want... If we're doing 2,000 all the way down 8 of these... Uh, it would probably be better if... It's coming in from the side. Preferably with room for a pump here. Yeah. But heat pipe is such a minimal issue now. I, I I assume if they didn't change a whole lot about the heat how the heat pipes works, I don't know why they would do that. Uh then our design is gonna be more or less as simple as this. You need two more reactors? Oh, true. But yeah, I'm just sort of illustrating uh, what we're going to do tomorrow. For now, let's finish up. And I'll grab that channel. Doing the charity stream. Smokin. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let me just have a quick... Whoa! Loud. I thought I muted that. Alright, give me a sec. I have Twitch muted globally so that ads don't rip into my ears. Yeah, understandable. Alright, away we go. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're interested in that. If you have any questions, by all means. And we'll continue with SE tomorrow. And possibly beyond that, I do feel like doing a bit of extra Factorio this week. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out. Take care, Westi uh, Westiex. Hey, Kane. Thanks for coming by. Veldak, see you next time. Sugan. Vlad, guy clicking. See you next time. And away we go. Sylvia, $20. I don't have anything special to say, but thank you for the stream, Jacob. Trans rights.
Super Dad donates twenty dollars coming in to support their.